Welcome to a very special podcast episode today of the Red Leaf Retrocast. It's a very it is, mysterious one. <laughs> it is myself, Josh, Kevin, and... Dun, 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 dun. The mom. My Sour Patch Kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. mom. <laughs> I got Sour Patch Kids too, though, so... We have Hi, JD's everybody. mom. Yeah, so my mom is here. She's not much of a gamer, but she played some games. But she does like movies. So the way we're going to do do this today is we're going to have our little introduction of everything. A little bit of my mother's past and what oh it's God. like to be... Yeah. Seriously? Oh, oh, yeah. Going Only there. the gaming going past. There. I don't, college days? Only the gaming past. Oh, yeah. All yeah. Right, you, know, the, you know, when you were in your 20s. <laughs> we don't need JD's origin story today. Sorry. Sorry, It's been JD's a while. Mom. You're not getting arrested in Canada. <laughs> In Minnesota. That sounds like a better story. Go on. Wait a minute. <laughs> it sounds like a better Sorry. story. JD. Who needs a Metro cast? Let's not go there. Stuff. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, video games turned into movies, since you've seen quite a few of those. Uh, and the special topic is mystery games, and we even saw a mystery movie on Friday night. Dun, dun, what did dun, you dun. see? We saw Orient... Uh, um, Murder. Murder on the Orient Express. Murder on the Orient You know what I seen Express. on Friday? I saw what? Pokemon I Choose You and got Ash's Pikachu card. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery in that is how many people are still watching Pokemon movies. Actually, the thing was packed. I was surprised. Isn't there like 20 movies now of Pokemon? I don't know about 20, See, and but I used to call it Pokemon. I, well, I still call it Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's funnier that it way. Depends if it's. It depends if there's more than one. They're Pokemon, but you know. well, and yeah, we we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, Pokemon. I don't think I don't think it means the same thing to you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, cheers. We, we keep bringing up my past. <laughs> oh, we got some wine going. Cheers. JD wanted to talk about it, so I mean, oh, it's better. So it's the the theme is mystery games. That was my pick. So we got six games and then a special game, since Josh wants to pick PC games all the time. Oh my god, you just don't like my picks ever. It's true. I feel like you're bullying him. In fact, it is. No, it's bully. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't bully someone younger than me. How much younger are you? Why? What's, what's wrong with what Josh picks? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, I honestly had to pick, like, eight games. I was running out of games to pick. And then after I picked my games, you go, well, it could have just literally been anything with a kind of mystery. I was like, are you serious, It man? could have been anything with a mystery, except the games you picked. They're trash. Your opinions are trash. <laughs> you pick all PC games. Like, come on. It's a, it's a, I'm not going to say it yet. God. <laughs> Dude, uh, are, are, uh, does anybody play PC games? I play Solitaire anymore? and uh, Minesweeper. Well... I am known as Miss Solitaire. Thank nice. You. For good. I had a nick. I had a nickname. I called you Don Solitaire for Don a while. So Don yeah. Solitaire. Because I looked at her phone log hours of Solitaire, <laughs> and it's in the thousands. That's pretty <laughs> cool. No, talk. It's talk about hundreds of thousands because. Uh, oh, that's I, right. That's only across one device. <laughs> That's not. That's not just dedication. That's donication. You know. Uh, <laughs> There's my alien horn. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what I don't do. I don't want to do anything. Well, you don't like games that make you think. Correct. So okay. no Tetris. So I, I, my, I like to be mindless most times. Same. Because hey, so I, I do be... that all day at my work. Oh, you'd be I'm great a, for I'm most PC IT, games. I'm in IT, so uh... I don't want to think after that. Oh, yeah, boy. you'd be great for most PC games nowadays. <laughs> so what have you guys been up to? It's been a, been a few weeks since we last spoke to each other. You know, I like to say I've been in school, but you know... With the whole Ontario college strike thing going on, I kind of just been uh, doing a whole bunch what of nothing. What are they striking about? Why are they on strike? Yeah. Uh, they're striking. They? They're striking because there's like a eighty twenty percent split on part time to full time teachers. So they're hiring more part timers and full timers. Uh, they're going so they want to try to have like an equal opportunity thing. Um, there's like a pay thing. There's they're going for academic freedom instead of you know them being like, hey, you have to do it this way. It's just, it's, it's a lot of, it's not bullshit, but at the same time, it's like uh, the one year that I decide to go to college after five years of being out of school, they decided to pull this shit. So how long has the strike been going on? Uh, well, we just finished week four. We're going into week five. They're going to an arbitration vote at the oh. end of the week. Wow. And it has to be a 51% approval rating. Otherwise, we're going on strike still. So wow. the joke is. And this is only, only against the colleges, right? 
Ontario colleges, yeah. Oh, so, Ontario like, universities, colleges, okay. Un, yeah, so universities are still going. So, like, University of Toronto's out. Um, Conestoga's out. St. Clair, which is the one I go to. They're, they're all wow. out, so. And there's well, no, you really didn't want the education this year, so. Yeah, I didn't want to learn. Next year or, might know, be better. Yeah, I didn't want to learn or make money this year, so I decided to quit my job and uh, go on strike. Excellent. Start streaming full time. Good choice. Yeah. Stream full time. Get them Twitch donations. You're gonna be fine. I thought about it, but you know, yeah. I'm not good well, enough you know, at any video game. You can start game. a GoFundMe page. I I could. Could. Nobody makes need... fun of people doing GoFundMe's. Like you're not e begging. It'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, exactly. So you just do that. I can also try to make any. Uh, I can also try to make uh, small like. Um, royalties off of our promo uh, thing off of uh, Amazon Prime using promo oh, code no. Redley Fun Fletcher fact, Cast. Actually, <laughs> there, I tried, there you go. I tried See, making, you could be uh, entrepreneurial. I tried making yeah, an exactly. Amazon affiliate link way more complicated than you would think, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I was like, let's oh, look boy. into that. And I was like, uh, this is hard. I got to give tax information. I don't want to do that. What turns into a joke now turns into something I was serious. actually going to surprise you and be day. like, RLR cast, like... RLR yeah. cast. That's how you get 10% off on Amazon Prime. <laughs> if it says error code not valid, just trust us it works. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> or if it doesn't work, send your credit card information to notascam at hotmail.com. <laughs> uh, I thought we were using Net- Netscape. <laughs> and, you, and you know, Josh, there's probably an email out there just like that. Not Probably. I, you know, oh, I yeah. Send it to MetallicaFan666 at uh, Hotmail. <laughs> <laughs> And then the real mystery would be is if you actually keep your credit card, you know, that'd be a good one. We'll keep <laughs> oh, nice. it in the mystery. This didn't set up anything. Well, besides the strike, what else has been going on? I got South Park. Oh, how you been liking that? I fuck. Sorry. I freaking love it. <laughs> Stop swearing. I'm sorry. Dick. What was the word you meant to say? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's funny. I love it. Um, it's I love Stick of Truth. So I came into this knowing that I was going to love this too because South Park is... You don't have to... It's the, they're not there for the game. The game itself is kind of just... Eh. It's more or less the ridiculous amounts of humor they can shove into your face at once. I haven't played too much of it yet. Like, I got to the part where I beat up the strippers at the strip club. As per usual. Yep. <laughs> As per usual, and then that's about as far as I got, and now uh, I think it's Jimmy has a stripper living in his home named um, Classy, with I think a K. Oh, from so, the game, uh, from the yeah, show. No, no, that was no, just it's from friend Timmy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I got that far into the game, and then I got Super Mario Odyssey, so I've been working at that slowly too. Yeah, I've been playing it before bed the last few nights, just uh, post-game stuff. Yeah, it's nice to just go around and explore. I really it's had funny. to. I really had to put the headphones in last night because the the bear was going in hibernation in my bed next to me. He tells uh. me I snore, <laughs> but I don't know if I snore because I'm. Did sleeping. you just refer to your mother as a bear? She yes. was. She was like a bear Are in a cage going in hibernation. Mother, There's a cherry gay man. <laughs> How rude, yeah. JD! Don't you have don't any call respect your for your mother? A cherry gay man. <laughs> Don't do- I will not sit here and have you disrespect your mother like this. I can be a cuddly bear. Oh, she's a cub. That's the younger bears. Okay, that's fine. Don't ask me why I know okay. all this. Maybe well, this is be, why your well, brother is going to uh, Poland. Well, I could be a cougar. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I think Kevin lives close enough, if you guys really that's know. That's right. Yeah. Kevin lives in Connecticut. Yeah. Does he now? Yeah. Yeah, keep it in the family, I'll Kevin. I'll give you my address after the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's college all over again. <laughs> He'll walk up to JD after. You can call me dad now. <laughs> bring, bring JD too. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Ew. Yeah, yeah. Cooties. <laughs> Ew, cooties. Ew, cooties. Yeah. <laughs> cooties. <laughs> Ew, GD cooties. Ew. Yeah, that's. Oh, no. we, we Although that, that does stuff. remind me of the, of the story in college where yeah, uh, graduation, where we went to the pub afterwards with a lot of my fellow geology students that were graduating. Mm-hmm. And when you went up to bar, the bar, a 24 year old was hitting on nice. you. Nice, right? And then she looks over at me. And I like, want to be saved. I said, dude, I, I, I'm. 
I could be your mother. And he's like, yeah, right. Plot twist. I said, he, his mother. He goes, <laughs> he goes, who are you here with? I said, my son right there. And he looks over, he goes, oh, so what are you doing tonight? Nice. <laughs> I go, okay. Just that's totally what happens when you go to a college that's like nine to one ratio yeah. of guys to women. <laughs> Does he just hold anything because I was cute, turn. JD. Well, yes, of course, that Thank too. You. Yeah. That too. <laughs> But seriously, oh, nine to one ratio. <laughs> He's just saying the odds are also in your favor. It's I, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's your oh, yeah. choice. It's your Let choice at that you. point. It was very nice. <laughs> I had nice views. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. What about you, Kevin? What you been up to? Uh, let's see. I started playing Crystallis on my little emulator thing, and I used a guide because emulator. Shut your mouth. And um. I'm just I'm trash at all of them. It pretends to play old, just move closer. old Game Boy games. It's uh I used a guide because I'm trash and uh, I got lost, so I almost broke my thing. Uh, you got lost with yeah, a guide. They wrote it in like English. <laughs> it's like go sith down to the river. I'm like oh boy, this is gonna be trash. If you go up south, yeah. you go down to the Y'all river. Come back, you yeah. just got to channel your inner Texan yeah, there. Yeah. I'm f- pretty sure the guy who wrote it is from Texas. His name is Sanji, so definitely not Texan. Uh, oh, you don't Japan, know that. Uh, I was go- well, maybe he's a, a he's te- Texas, a, an Asian Texas yeah. guy, so that's Ajax. Ajax. Yes. Ajax. Ajax. <laughs> Texan. And then I... Um, <laughs> As much as, as that's insensitive, I'm gonna find you forty five thousand. Go get triggered somewhere. Um, <laughs> go get triggered yeah. somewhere. Go blog about Don't be a somewhere. millennial on Twitter. And then um, <laughs> no, yeah. I started amongst my uh, my better no. judgment. <laughs> We're not having that conversation. He's yeah, you rude ass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. I'm interested. Go ahead. Thank you. We should get, give it to JD. Keep his mom. Uh, <laughs> this is the Red Leaf Donna cast. Yeah. The, um, no, I started Breath of the Wild to see what all the hype was about. I don't have a... No, it's a terrible game, yeah, right? Yeah, no, it's trash. Uh, no, it's actually... It's really good. It is not a 10. There goes everyone watching the game. What, Everyone's mad at me now. But it's not a 10. No game's a 10. Um, but it's definitely like an 8.5. I like it a lot. I want to keep playing it's, it. But the weapon durability is trash. That. I hate that game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hate it so I, much. Tell us how you really feel. I could, Sonic but Mark's I don't have friend. enough years of therapy to let it all out yet. <laughs> oh, oh Jesus, a rumbling. So you'll play it again, right? I'm still playing it. I haven't even beaten it yet. Oh, you're yeah. still playing yeah. it. They're actually coming out with a DLC I will an expansion not buy to that. the game later this month. Will not buy. Uh, to expand the story. In fact, what I'm going to do instead is buy the Horizon DLC because that's a better game than Zelda. I said it. I agree. Yeah. I still haven't even played my Horizon Zero Dawn yet. Get the hell off this podcast. Let me talk to JD's mom and go play. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes then. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> That's all I've been doing. I had nothing else crazy. I've had very little time. Uh, spoiler: I watched videos on some of the games we did today because I was I was screwed for time. So there. Fair enough. Oh, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. So a couple of the games you don't even need to play, honestly. <laughs> ex- yeah. that. Like the f- oh my god. The, the, your second pick, JD, was the... JD's oh, picks were ass. <laughs> Act, no, uh, no, only one, no, of, them no, only one of them was. Only one of them was. I'm sorry, I said it. We'll, we'll you're, get there. You're oh, ass. We'll get there. You're what have ass. you been up to, sir? Well, I moved out of Canada to Rhode That's Island. The spirit. I don't Can care what American JD's spirit. up to. <laughs> well, at least you didn't come to Texas. So it's a good thing. Yeah, everything's in water. <laughs> Everything. Not anymore. Well, I mean, devastation. No, that, it'll be years before they fix Texas again. You know? Well, aren't they still trying to fix New Orleans? Well, to be, well they did the uh, there, favor. there's areas in New Orleans that yes, there's there. It, it's not worth fixing. It's, it's not really worth just fixing. It, it's, it's not anywhere that <laughs> says New Orleans. They just left there like better off this yeah. way. <laughs> it's, yeah, the, we'll turn this into a water park. How about yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of teardowns. I went through one neighborhood that um, there was literally all that was left of the house was the foundation, and because um, the whole house floated away. Oh wow. the, the friend of mine, she her house was uh, safe because it was up on like a, a, a knoll, 
and below her the entire neighborhood was underwater to the roof Jeez. line and then some i saw um uh like a boat stuck in trees that there's no way you could get it out and uh, there was a, like a motor home that was stuck in trees sideways that there's no way you could get it out. It was the, the amazing uh, amazement of devastation was just phenomenal. I mean, people's homes, the entire house inside was outside on the street waiting to be picked up for dump. Wow. It was just an incredible, you see it on TV, you know, just tornadoes or whatever, but the um to actually um see it it's it's the the garbage piles are eight feet tall and just it's it's so sad to see people's life out on the street ready for the dump Mm. you know and when they say you lost everything it's understatement yeah so to say because your your uh neighbor that was across the street just bought was moving and bought a like a farmhouse or something, right? Right. And that's and, gone. And that's gone. They didn't even get to move in. No. So, you know, Harvey was uh, unprecedented as far as um, the amount of water and what the uh, the release of water, and that's why the devastation happened, was because they released water, uh, not uh, preparing people for the water release, Mm-hmm. Which you know goes into a whole other conversation, but right. um, it was uh, it was pretty phenomenal. Just getting to work um, after they opened up um, some of the roads back, you know, and getting people back to work. Uh, the first day it would take just two to three hours just to go thirteen miles. Uh, some people didn't even go to work the, the first week you were able to go to work a, because yeah, they did uh, I had a friend of mine have to stay with me because her apartment complex was completely underwater. And, um, you know, she had just gotten out just before, uh, within 15 minutes about the time when she got out of her complex, <laughs> her complex was completely underwater. It was, it came Ooh. that fast. Yeah. It was pretty, uh, wow. Yeah, and so something that you don't want to experience, I mean, to prepare for something and and there was no preparation. And um, unfortunately, Houston made a decision to release water that shouldn't have have, um, occurred like it did. And people are paying a high price for it because a lot of people didn't have flood insurance because their area wasn't supposed to flood. They were like, fuck this rain. I'll shoot it with my guns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's actually not a, not too far off in the way they yeah. think. A lot yeah, of people means, think. But... Uh, remind me to never visit or live in the south with all this fucking water going around. Yeah, it'll be fine. Well, like I said, you know, the, the what happened with Harvey and, and the it was mainly the cause of the release of the water that and the amount of water that came so quickly. Um, well, it's the way the city's built, too, just on Well, cement. they don't call it the on, Bayou City for nothing. Well, it's it's a whole city <laughs> built on a swamp, essentially, with well, cement on top, so there's nowhere the water Orleans. to go. That's, that's, that's just... And it's a Bayou City, but um, anyways... Well, no, Houston's a swamp, too. They're all trash. Yes. Yeah. It's a Bayou it's below, city. It's below sea level. And yeah. Anyways, that's why they lost on a lighter the note... <laughs> That's why they lost the Civil War. Yeah, okay. Video games, though. Uh, on a li- on a lighter note, um, it's the Alamo. Yeah. On a lighter note, you went to the World Series victory party for the Houston Astros. Party. Go Astros! Party animal. So I'm originally from Chicago. The Cubs won last year. Yay! Yeah, for the first time in your years. lifetime. And then you right. Wagoned on to the Astros. And then right. I'm in. I'm yeah. And then 55 <laughs> years for the Astros. Never, you know, it, it, they had to go to the American League to win. But hey, they beat the Rangers. Woohoo! No, they didn't. Wait, they beat, wait, wait. No, I'm they saying the Dod- they, they beat, beat the, the Rangers oh. as far as getting a World Series oh. ring. You know, before so, Texas. Okay, yeah. wait a second. So, so yeah. The world- wait, the World Series is over. I didn't even know it started. <laughs> are are you on this planet? Well, if the Jays aren't in it, just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, even even if the Jays are are in the 
playoffs, I guess, or whatever they want to call it. I'm not too too interested, to be fair. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> it, Josh, it was it was it was the best World Series I'd ever seen. It was in my life. really really cool. I don't know. I don't um, think anything. It was ever a lot be... of fun, but because it wasn't the Mets, Dodgers. Ooh, Ooh. nobody was going to watch the game. Sponsorship went down. Oh, the revenues went down. Couldn't get sponsored by David's Tea. They couldn't even Uh, get sponsored by Double Bubble Bubble Gum. Well, that is trash (laughs) because that lasts for like three seconds anyway, so... They, I they know had, it's disgusting. Yeah. They had to uh, they had to put the just the joke in the World Series. They had to put all the gum because the players chew it all instead of chewing tobacco. Mm-hmm. Now uh, they had to put it all just a big bucket of uh, uh, what a gator what Gatorade would go mm-hmm. in. So a big Gatorade bucket. They had to throw all the the double bubble bubble gum inside. So players would just <laughs> nice eat out of there. <laughs> the whole time. Really funny. Too. That was there. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I moved to Rhode Island. I joined a bowling league already. Of course you did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> did my of did. <laughs> did my like, first bowling tournament already as well. Did did okay. I'm still waiting on the results. And then last night, mom and I here. Um, not only did we go see a movie, we went duck pin bowling. You guys know what that I is? I do. I used to have one near me. I have no idea what that it's is. It's like midget bowling. Is that an? Is that an? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you toss the midget down the lane? Yes. Or? No, you do. Yeah, that's part of it. Okay, so what's what's duck pin bowling? Is that like they're, some American they're thing? They're miniature pins. They're very tiny, squatty uh, bowling pins. It's the same amount of pins uh, that you have in regular bowling, 10. But um, the pins are really short, and you get three tries to get all the pins down, oh. which is quite entertaining in itself. So I, and instead of a big ball, and you throw a little tiny shot put like so ball. I was yeah, right. Yeah, they're so, small, small balls. Yeah, I get three chances to fuck we up throwing, again. We were throwing small blue balls last nice. night too. Yeah, blue balls. <laughs> hey, you you leave my love life out of this, all right? I don't, I don't appreciate you putting me on blast like that to all our fans. Yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't know until now. Yeah, well, we do. God damn we it! Do. Yeah, I, oh, it's like they could just tell. They can hear it in my voice. I see. I have one of those. So, um, I have one of those voices. I'm going through a little little reverse culture shock here because everyone in Canada is so nice. And then uh, there's been a couple instances just in the New England area here that really make it stand out. Yeah, you're on the Northeast Coast. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we're very uh, polite people, if you have money. Um, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much how nice you are to people around here, I've learned. That's... Well, I think every place has their own, you know... Uh, style of people sure you know um you texans are very aggressive drivers uh over here it's i'm coming out whether you like it or not uh, and do you want to stop or not oh i thought you Uh, meant the closet because we were getting very uh like friendly around this place these the the drivers here are i thought texas was bad but the drivers here are just really different Quick, quick question for you guys since you brought up driving. Are you guys allowed to take right turns when you're able to in traffic? What do you mean? Yes. Like on a red light? Oh, yeah. okay. It depend, depends yes. on the light. Unless it says yeah. no right turn well, yeah, on but, red, yeah. you yeah. know, but yeah. We learned there's a move in Connecticut where it's called uh, No Cop, No Stop. It's a pro move around here. <laughs> well, we, we, we call it the Texas Rolling Stop, and, and I actually did get pulled over and ticketed for doing the Texas Rolling Stop. We have. And I was so pissed. That's not a thing. <laughs> and I and I told the cop. I said, "Well, I hope I I made your quota for the month." God, nice. I was so pissed. We have this thing in Windsor called the Windsor Red, and okay. uh, basically what it is is just as the light turns red, you go through anyway. Oh yeah, everyone does that. <laughs> but we it's called I guess it's just called the Windsor Red. I have never heard about that until I went into my uh, issues in Canadian justice. This year, just say and sorry. Like, yeah, we have off. just yeah, really. Like it's just. Uh, I'm sorry, officer. Yeah, you didn't Here, I have some three tins. kids, but you know what? You seem nice. <laughs> okay, you know I got Tim's. And we're going out to get some donuts. Want to come with us? Want to get some Hooters, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Hooters. I don't think we even have a Hooters. Probably a good idea because it's not great. 
Yeah, we'll go down. We'll hit up the local Tim's, and uh, we'll go to a bar and catch the Leafs game on tonight. Yeah, you have a couple of loonies I can spare. I got a toonie. You got change for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just we're going. We're going. We're going to the Leafs. Uh, Leafs at Bruins game tonight. Nice. Go Leafs. That'll be fun. Leafs. Go I ha- Leafs. I haven't been to a hockey game since the '60s Jeez. with my dad. You look like you're so, 20. I don't know what you look like, but I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely sound like you're. In you your sound 20s. like you're in your 20s. Don't lie to me. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Should. But it, I'm really, I'm really excited. We're like eight rows up, so that's a good day, actually. Nice. Yeah. Well, I yeah. wish you both a so fun I'm time. Really excited. Yeah. Looking uh, forward to. It. Yeah. So why don't we uh, get to get to know you and your past a little bit? Why college, don't you want to talk college. about games? Well, it, it, it is, it is, it has to do with games a little oh, bit. Let's um, just talk about games. Let's do it. <laughs> JD, take uh, for, take your headphones off. So, <laughs> so Kevin and Josh have come up with a couple questions for you. Really? Yeah. No way. Did you hang out no, in arcades in the 80s? Was that a thing? Did people really do that as much as they say? Well, see, by the time I was in the 80s, it was the 80s, I was um, going to college. And so um, my life revolved around bars. Nice. And uh, going to school. And that was your late tw- mid to late 20s, correct? Late twenties. Yeah, yeah. Was there golden teas ever? Was that around then or no? Do or what? Golden tea was that that, that arcade? The golden tea. Go- the golf <laughs> yeah, game, the right? Golf game that's always in every bar. Oh yeah, the golf game. Yeah, the, the, they always have those. Like, it, and it was all all guys, always guys. That's where you pick them up at. You're like, yeah, nice swing you got there, Tex. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you roll that ball. I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the way you roll the ball. It's got good that wrist a motion. One. The thumb. I, I like the flick of the wrist. It's good one. Four. Yeah. <laughs> play. You had to have some downtime in college. You, you play anything in college? There had to be some games. Uh, honestly, um, so when dare. it... <laughs> Solitaire, yeah, but deport- that's when they. I still used cards. <laughs> but, right, I hope there's a VR um, solitaire, JD, so you and your mom can sit there because you're still about VR lately. <laughs> it's just you at a coffee table, like here actually, we go. Actually, they have this thing on Steam called Tabletop Simulator. It's a VR, and you can actually get like solitaire on there. <laughs> So just throw on the note there why, for you. Why bust out a deck of cards, Mrs. Woolley? I'm just looking out for you, Mrs. Woolley. Uh, oh, I appreciate to, that, but I am not a to, Mrs. any oh, longer. Sorry, Miss. Uh, <laughs> just call miss me Donna. Donna. Okay, JD's mom. Mama. Um, <laughs> all right, JD's mom. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> I don't know why they keep calling, even though you're you're divorced and mer- happily uh, single. Mm-hmm. And why they continue to call me Mrs. Wooly when I'm not? I'm still not. I don't I'm know. Not maybe, maybe maybe because you're at an age and people just assume. <laughs> and it's the South because people. I don't know. But he's not from the South. Josh is just being a polite Canadian. That's who they are. <laughs> it's just what I do, eh? <laughs> it's just what ah, you do, eh? That's what you do, eh? I've been working on my New England Canadian accent, <laughs> tra- trying to mold them together. No, all you gotta do is say. I'd like to speak but to you know the what? Let me tell you. Let me tell you something that that was in bars. A lot of it, what's in bars is was billiards. I do like you, billiards. Oh, you do just play pool. I love that stuff. And yeah. hello, there you go, leaning over the pool. You That's know, the pool table. Hey, baby, right. let me show you hello. how to shoot. <laughs> Get me a free That's shot. That's where you play games. <laughs> Get me that free so Frank. You were telling me you were telling me a story just what was it last year, a couple years ago, you actually played you finally played Pac-Man for the first Excuse time. Excuse me. What? Yeah. Well, see games back in the day were guy games. Guys, uh, girls, women just hung out with their guy and the guy would play the games and that would be the thing. That's rude of him. He should have involved her. But I I just wasn't a big uh, gamer because I was mainly playing pool. That was my thing. I like to play pool. And then uh, Pac-Man, I played it like three years ago at a Christmas party because we were at a bar where they had all the old games, you know, uh, skee-ball and 
uh, Pac Man, and so I think was there like, was Donkey who, Kong, and so it was like um, a barcade. Yeah, it was a barcade, exactly. Right. So the barcade's not a new concept by any means. No. Yeah, and pinball machines, right? Pinball machines, yeah. Um, nice. And of course, karaoke. Mm. That's the best part. <laughs> Gotta do <laughs> karaoke. Drunken, says. drunken car- yeah, I can picture it now. Drunken, Dr- drunken karaoke. karaoke. Girls yeah. hanging out at the billiards table while a dude breaks his wrist on the golf arcade machine <laughs> trying to hit the ball too hard. <laughs> Sounds like the best day ever. <laughs> sounds like my kind of birthday party, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it, almost, yeah. it almost sounds like an old school Dave and Buster's. <laughs> I'm into this. I laugh, but I don't know what Dave and Buster's is. <laughs> it's a wonderful time. Let's just put it that way. It's like adult arcade. Is that also- well, and, and the, uh, your other games, you know, were your driving games. Mm. When- Such as? Do you remember? I have no memory. Outrun. You have no memory, memory of the past. I have no, I have no recall. <laughs> I was stoned all the time. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. Night. That's awesome. Now I got a different. Now I got a different picture. Why are you playing all those dumb games? Let's just go get high. <laughs> you don't even need the game. Okay, just <laughs> you can just think you're in a game. Just plug the controller into the TV and, and think you know, you're playing I the show. I probably did play games, but I don't have a recall. <laughs> you don't Fair have enough. a recall. I don't have a recall. <laughs> you know, I'm I have getting a, you already. I have a dream emulator. <laughs> you know, I have a few of those games too, but I've never done drugs to play them. I just, uh, we're gonna put that away. Drugs are the game. Oh, there was definitely a couple games on the list here that maybe play, <laughs> partaking in an alternate state of mind would have made them better. So let's talk oh. about them then. No, we're not done yet. Come on, man. Do a smooth ass segue. No. <laughs> uh, I tried my best. I I really didn't say any anything like that though. No, I, yeah, I never, uh, I never smoked. Uh, oh no, yeah, never. no, never, never, definitely not. <laughs> no, you didn't grow up in the seventies and eighties. I, I at never, all. I never inhale. No, <laughs> I drugs are bad and good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your mother didn't hang out under the bleachers, JD. Stop assuming things. Uh-huh. Oh, right. was that a th- was that a thing even back oh, then? Because yeah. that's something that they would do in. We in... smoked in the bathroom. Are you kidding me? Okay. Nice. <laughs> that's why they made the fucking song "Smoking in the Boys Room." Exactly. That's my time. <laughs> she was in the girls' room. <laughs> you jerk. Everybody knows that smoking ain't allowed in school. Smoking's allowed Thanks. in school. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> oh boy! Well, I hope not. <laughs> Uh, that, I'm going to karaoke with JD's mom. Nice. <laughs> well, she can sing. I'm a monotone deaf person that can't hear JD her voice. JD can sing off key really well. There you go. Go with seducer. Can, JD. <laughs> he, he, he was not in the men's choir. <laughs> I can picture uh, you in the men's so choir now. I can picture JD <laughs> on stage doing like a, like some, a prince act, you know? <laughs> yeah, just the dance moves. <laughs> no, singing too. I'll be a backup dancer. That's what I'll be. Oh, so you're going to Kevin Federline someone. <laughs> Why you got to make fun of my past? Oh, Kevin, I'm so no, sorry. No, that's not making fun of your past, dude. Kevin Federline, like uh, was it Kevin Hart said, is literally the American dream. I don't know if uh, we all have the same dream, though. Okay, but he, <laughs> he did the same thing the chick from Spice Girls did to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Which was? Uh, came in, had a baby, divorced him, got half of his shit. Boom. Nice. Done. Kevin Federline came into Britney Spears, had about had a few kids, drove her crazy, divorced, Sh- got half her shit. Shaved her head. Done. <laughs> that, she, that's the, he Kevin Federlined her. Yeah. He K-Fed her? Yeah. He little did he know. K-Fed her. Like, oh, that's why it's called that. He K-Fed her. Yeah. I get you now. So... Oh boy, the American dream. So okay, so in the in the in the uh, to recount in the seventies was you were there was it seemed to be there was a phase where the old the old the old ways were still well seventies you you still had your pinball machines and and you had your right you know and then and then they would bring in the um, the uh, I do love pinball uh, pinball and billiards and. And then you had the Pac-Man and the Donkey Kong and... Galaga, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Um, but you had your arcade games, but that that 
Those weren't in there. You it had your um, shuffleboard. Oh, shuffleboard, right. Okay. Yeah, shuffleboard. Uh, that was big in the bars. So not but so then many with video the 80s, games. when the 80s rolled around, that's when the console started coming out with the ColecoVision, right. the Atari, right. and the Intellivision uh, right. the controllers with the with the dials and right. all the number pads. Right. Um, now, by that time, you were at an age uh, that wouldn't really apply to many... It, it wouldn't apply to you, essentially. Correct. So, what were what were your experiences? Kind of just seeing it all come out. Did you even notice it? Is is kind of the the question there? Well, it, it came down to I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. but, but, so then, so then I follow up with, well, why didn't you give a shit then? Was it simply the age thing of where you were at in life, or was it something else? No, it was where I was at in life, mm-hmm. you know, because that wasn't that wasn't my priority anymore. Because I I was out of college, finding a job, not hanging out at bars anymore, right? You know, and uh, just making a living now. And what what were you doing at the time? School bus driving, mm-hmm. bartending. Bus driver and bartender. Right. That's an that's an old school type of job. <laughs> no, I want to be a bartender real bad. Yeah. You've been you've been laying that line out on me a lot, a lot lately. Any time right. you're right about something, you go bus driver knows the thing. <laughs> no, cheers to the bus driver. Cheers to the bus driver. That's the other one. <laughs> that's, that, that's my cheers thing. Hell yeah! Did you get on top of the bar? Uh, cheers to the bus driver, everyone. <laughs> get down, exactly. Donna. This isn't Coyote. You're not supposed to drink it. Sir. <laughs> so my my favorite bus bus driving sto- story is that I was a uh, a um, Picking up high school students, and uh, whoa, you might want to rephrase that a different way because it's 2017. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't listen. Don't listen to your son. So Just these two on. guys decide that they're going to sit behind nice. me, right? And I pull away from the uh, school, and we're starting to. I'm starting to head to my route, and I look up in my mirror to see, you know, that everybody's sitting down and whatever, and I've got spitballs all on my mirror. Oof. And I pull the bus over. I don't give a shit. I pull the <laughs> bus over and I put the car in park. I mean, put the uh, bus in park. I get out of my seat and I, and I make an announcement to the entire bus. And I look at the two guys behind me. I said, y'all have a choice you guys have a choice well, you didn't say not y'all. you all i said you guys have a choice yeah. I like y'all. either they get kicked off the bus now or we go back to school get off the bus the whole <laughs> bus is telling the kids get off the bus that's a democratic way to go about so, it <laughs> so the two guys got their stuff they get off the bus and i drive off well, now, of course, you can't do that, but I did at that time. And uh, so about a week later, same day, a week later, who gets on? I'm doing the same route again. They come on my bus and their face went white. And I look at them. I go, we going to have a good ride home today, boys? Yes. <laughs> Did they sit behind me? No. Did I have any problems? No, not anymore. Not with them. And anyway. that's how we take care of bad children. Yeah. You can't, Get you can't. off the bus. I can't do that anymore. I would have no. been fired. Not only is this the retrocast, this is also how to raise your child on the bus 101. <laughs> <laughs> you almost missed that kind of kind of way about going about things because it's it's not violent or anything it's just you're you're a dick well i I come to find out that their walk home was like two and a half miles (laughs) big deal that's 40 minutes which is not which is nothing but you know don't mess with me holy shit (laughs) (laughs) wow that's harsh wait wait now i gotta ask was it winter in chicago at the time it was in the fall okay then no big deal (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah no big deals two and a half miles that's not a big deal but I was a substitute bus driver so you know s- substitutes get a lot of shit mm-hmm. so you know how can we antagonize the substitute and so they they just 
yanked my chain and I said, yeah, I'm not having any of that. And then, um, we had, I had smokers on my bus and, and they <laughs> were, ju- the they were junior high. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is that, um, this was a junior high school that I had to pick up and, and I'm smelling smoke and I go, oh crap. Now I got to pull over. And I didn't know who it was. But I just start walking to the back of the bus where I'm thinking the smoking was happening. And the girl looks at me and she goes, I'm sorry. And I go, I'm sorry too, but now you have to go back. (laughs) So we had to go back to school. And because I didn't know who did it, but then she goes, I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh crap, I got to take you back because. If she didn't say anything, it wouldn't have been an issue. Right. I I wouldn't have had to take her back. And so I felt bad, you know, but. She never, uh, never smoked on my bus again. Well, cheers to the bus driver. Cheers to the bus driver. See, there you go. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, JD should have told us that we had, I would have been drinking too. I got nothing to do today. <laughs> oh man. I drank my lot. So, so sorry. Uh, Kevin, you got another question for her? Yeah. Do you, I thought, um, did you, you put me on the spot? <laughs> so, what do you watch your well, stupid? St- okay. How many games did you watch your stupid son play while you're visiting? I'm sorry. Quite a few. <laughs> uh, what did you guys play together? How many? It was three or four. What'd you play? We played some stupid, <laughs> stupid, nice PC game. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It was so it's bad. Called, <laughs> it's called, okay, we'll get it was to that. Space Cadet. It was a pinball game. No, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, Josh, what about you? Any, any, any questions? Uh, I just want to know if like treatment of like the like people who played a lot of video games like in the schools and stuff were kind of like how they're portrayed in like movies and stuff. Did you see a lot of stuff like that for like the nerdy crowd? Like they were getting picked on and bullied really hard, or is it kind of just well, they, the handhelds weren't out at the time. I'm not talking no, about like actually, handhelds, but I mean no. like. Those didn't come out until what the um, let me think mid to late eighties. Late eighties. Right? Well, yeah. that no, had to be late eighties. I don't mean like the um, uh, the handhelds because I know they didn't come out for a while. But I mean like the kids who play like you know your Dungeons and Dragons or shit like that are actually playing like a lot of video games or if like what they had at the time. So board games. Well, board games are like Dungeons and Dragons. Really, would be the only one. Do they get treated like well, as brutally no, as they show in the movies or like? I don't think you were in even in close to that crowd, even when you were in school, because you were a cheerleader, weren't you? <laughs> right. I was in grade school. Oh, grade school cheer. Okay, yeah. so what? What a so what? I think what Josh is going to when you were in junior high school. High school. Did you see like groups of kids kind of doing those role playing things? Like, was it as stereotypical as they make the nerds look in like the movies and oh, stuff? I get what you're asking now. Yeah, uh, like the movie Revenge of the Nerds? Kinda, yeah. Mm, well, I had my revenge on nerds, Ooh. but... Um, <laughs> 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 I was bad. <laughs> Mother. I, had a, I know, I had a cat fight in high school, <laughs> and... Because the freaking girl bought... Because I, I protected my, my nerdy nerdy friends um even though i wasn't a nerd i i was just uh, a protector of the um people that got picked on and i didn't appreciate it and so um actually it happened when i was in choir class and uh this girl um was really bothering a, a somebody you know p- being picked on and i wasn't really a friend of the person but um uh, she was really being uh, Bitch. a bully, oh. mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> so I put her in her place. And lo and behold, she became friends with me because she didn't want to get her ass kicked again. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> so there was never a problem in choir after that, um, and the same thing that happened in in grade school too. Um, being um, though, I was a cheerleader. I was still there was a. a people that would be picked on and and um i was just i just wasn't having it and no nobody picked on anybody when when donna came into town (laughs) it was just not allowed well i got i got one more question for you then what uh so 
See, bullying is is, is everybody grows up with it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just it, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's, it's just an unfortunate and, thing. And and it is unfortunate, and and well, I was, unfortunately I was heavily. that um, there's not more protectors uh, out there that instead of standing aside and letting it happen to actually take initiative and stop it. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, there's so much pass. There's so much pacifism. Pacifism. Yeah. That um, the the people know you know they they don't want to get involved they, they'd rather tell right. well to to stop something you take initiative as soon as, soon as you see it happen mm-hmm. and and unfortunately um i think today uh the children aren't being um taught to take that initiative and 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 say stop it now. I would say so. I mean, I experienced it firsthand. It seems like kids are being taught to turn a blind eye. Not, not necessarily turn a blind eye, but it's better to tell than take initiative to to stop it now and say, "Hey, stop it." And um, that's it's that's a whole other wow. Thing. So Josh asked, asked a question about Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> and we got a conversation about bullying in schools. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's funny how that works out. <laughs> Uh, so then, I, I have one more. I have one more question. Then we can we can uh, move on to some of our mystery movie and video game movie topics. <clears throat> um, so, uh, my godfather, not my uncle, that I always thought that was cleared up with me uh, just today. I actually got me my first Nintendo Nintendo game. Yeah. Um, and then your best friend actually wanted to give me a Game Boy. Correct. Uh, the original Game Boy when right. I was young, and you said no. No. So what, said no. What were what? what how did the how did those two things like come to be, and why you said no, and then how why you said yes to the Nintendo? Well, the Nintendo actually you got that before you even were able to play it. He get, right. I remember getting it very young, and yeah. you, you said you're not ready for it yet, or something along those lines. You're not ready, young uh, man. And then I saw it like what was it two Christmases later or something, just out of nowhere. Remember something like that happening? Something like that, but. Um, but Game Boy, let's see, because you were in, born in 88, and I think she wanted to give it to you when you were three or f- four? Something like that, yeah. And I was like, not yet. Mm-hmm. And it was expensive. Those were expensive. They were um, probably 80-some bucks at the time, Yeah. Game Boys. I imagine they were more expensive than that at the they, time. They were expensive. Ridiculously expensive. And my stupid no son way. wouldn't shut up until I got him one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know right, I wanted you, it. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it was. It was too much for um, your current intelligence. Right. That's like getting a cell but phone I was, for a I was, I was. I had enough intelligence for wrestling, though. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. That's a different story altogether. <laughs> oh my god, he wrestled Bugs Bunny to death. <laughs> huh. My my husband at the time was walking in the airport with this giant Bugs Bunny. That was almost it was like a five foot tall Bugs Bunny. <laughs> that seems excessive. And, <laughs> the perfect wrestler, the perfect and wrestling so he, opponent. <laughs> it was. And so JD wrestled Bugs Bunny till his foot came off. And his, Not my foot. Geez. Right, till Bugs Bunny's foot came off. I had to sew Bugs Bunny up many times. Like I had just to put imagine, him in the sharpshooter in the figure four. <laughs> I got to imagine JD in the fucking... The Judy in the airport, or yeah, at the airport, taking this giant bug's bite, you go, choke slam! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was freaking funny. <laughs> seeing, seeing your dad come home with this bug's bunny in JD's face. <gasps> oh! I can beat it up! <laughs> <laughs> He was amused for months, years, actually. <laughs> to this day. Why get a video game console when I could beat up Bucks Bunny? <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't your first uh, oh, wrestling uh, when you were six, I think. I took you to your first wrestling match. I want to say it was f- actually four or five. Because I nah, saw, yeah, I four. saw Doink you the were, Clown and Ric Flair. and You were older than that. You had to be five then. Uh, you weren't maybe. four. I don't know. 
I was definitely really young. You were, yeah. So, okay. Well, that answers that. Well, how about we talk about movies, guys? You up for that? Yeah. yeah. Movies. <laughs> <Did you laughs> movies. Oh, my God. Games. So, I'd this talk is... about JD's past again. <laughs> I know, right? How boring. <laughs> how boring? No, well, yes, I mean, it focused on, on you, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. it did, it, I tried to focus it on you know the mother aspect of things. I know what right? your did in college. Uh, you want to know? Did, you want to know more things? Stuff. Yeah. You went to art school, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a graduate of graphic arts in, degree. Nice. In Chicago. In Chicago. 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 Yeah, I'm from Chicago, originally from Chicago, born and raised in Chicago. Let's talk about the party stories. <laughs> yeah, I got more fun. of that. <laughs> I didn't see the movies. I lied. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. There's a there's a there's a, yeah there's a stigma around movie adaptations if they're not from let's say a book or an original script if they come from something like video games they're usually they're bad. bad. They're bad. They're usually pretty bad. Well, They're bad. There's a reason. Even the good ones are bad. There's a reason, and it seems like a fairly... Well, don't you think comic book movies are bad, too? I mean, well, I think depending. comic books are for nerds Marvel anyway. Ones are cool. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of brought on this topic because... But it's the same thing. Yeah. So, so it's got a lot of similarities. Yeah. A lot of similarities, no, exactly. Because here's um, the deal. You have to... If you're doing a video game movie, so, like, right, like you have to squeeze down an eight-hour game to, like, an hour and a half two to hours. two hours. Or if you do a movie yeah. video game, you have to stretch out that two-hour movie to be like, fuck, what can we fill the space with? Like, yeah. it's just so much filler or you're compressing it too much. It doesn't work. Well, I personally just think movies are boring anyway, there you go. so... I'm not much so of a movie think, person. So you think uh, Tomb Raider was just a total waste? Hell yeah. So you're talking about the Angelina Jolie. Yeah, well, I mean, Angelina Jolie, they made the Tomb Raider because Tomb Raider was being successful, but then they made Angelina's Tomb Raider because it's fucking Angelina Jolie. You don't just not make a movie with her in it. See, I really like those Tomb Raider movies. It's been so personally. long since I've seen them, I honestly can't even remember how they went. I just remember there's like a scene where Angelina Jolie looks hot as fuck. Oh, wait, that's the whole movie. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> much the whole uh, premise of that movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you had your sim- simplistic go find the artifact uh, plot line, and then yeah. Lara, C- Lara Croft looks attractive not enough triangle yeah. titties well, what, what about what about movies that they made into a game like Raiders of the Lost Ark nah. well we actually had a right? whole Didn't podcast they do a topic Raiders of, of the Lost yeah. Ark oh yeah they have a ton of Indiana Jones games um, yeah. and those are generally bad as well yeah we had a whole podcast I, topic I don't know how you can even that. make a movie into a stupid video what? game <laughs> you wouldn't want to yeah. you never put the why video. would you want why would you want to because it's, it's yeah it's well as, but why as, would they you know they quote unquote money. they want to money it's a cash grab it is if, if something's is. popular but they didn't do, they, they didn't do Raiders of the Lost Ark movie until way way much later well you could because, say because uh, there was what um, one two three is it three or four uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark no, Raiders Maybe. of the Lost Ark. Raiders is the second Indiana Jones movie. Well, I'm, I'm just generalizing. But I mean, at the, I same, at the same time, um, they did World of Warcraft has been out it's, forever, and they Raiders just made the a Warcraft Ark. movie for it. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Lost in Space. I don't know. What are you talking yeah, about? That one where Indiana Jones went <laughs> to space, crossed over with Star Indiana, Trek. <laughs> oh, Indiana Jones, right? Indiana Jones. It went. Um, it went the the the, the tribe. Uh, what, what was that called? See, tomb something tomb. Oh, I'm throwing a blank on the first title. Then it went Lost Ark. Then it went Last Crusade. Temple of Doom? Then it went Crystal Skull. Temple of Doom. That's that was what it was the called. Best yeah, one. Thank you. Jeez. Yeah, Kali Ma ripping the heart out of the chest. Yeah. And so they they yeah. made uh, games out of all those. <laughs> they tried. Yeah. They tried. They and did better with the Lego version. It was they were they were made by uh, bad companies. Uh huh. Like there's one called LJN that mm-hmm. really had the movie license to make a lot of the games. And there there's a whole YouTube channel called uh, Angry Video Game Nerd mm-hmm. where he just covered. He basically somehow ended up covering everything LJN makes because they're all bad. Oh, okay. And it's funny. So oh, and that's why <laughs> he's angry. Don't you talk and that's why shit about Nightmare on Elm Street ever again. 
<laughs> and that was one of the games we covered on the, uh-huh. uh, that particular podcast was Nightmare on Elm Street Talk- uh-huh. was turned into a game and it was hot sh- hot you shit. can go uh-huh. to hell and you die that game was fucking stupid. Oh, and if okay. you like it, you're fucking stupid. Yeah, you <laughs> sexist pig. So some 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 of the some of the, some of the movie or video games turned into movies that are successful have been the Resident Evil franchise because there's been four, five, six movies of those. Debatable. Uh-huh. Uh, and what's what I feel that's made them good is they haven't tried to be the video game a hundred percent. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they've they've taken the idea that the video game is based off of that general plot line. Mm-hmm. T virus make mm-hmm. some zombies. Mm-hmm. Go fight the zombies in this set area based on the games, mm-hmm. and then make your own story from that. So what the Resident Evil ones have done is they've created a a singular character to be the focal point, and then they carry the movies on. I f- I I feel like that's that's good. That's a good way to go about them. In which we also saw, which we saw the other night, was the Assassin's Creed movie. They kind of focused on a singular <laughs> character and changed up the plot line to make it a better movie as opposed to trying to emulate the video game 100%. So they made a, a video game out of Assassin's Creed? It, yeah, there's 10 yeah. of them now. What? Ugh. Yeah. They're so dumb. They're so what? boring. It would be. Uh, no. I can see the movie as, as the movie. I enjoyed the movie. I, it- I enjoyed it as well. I like seeing people killed. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, but, um, and fighting. That explains a lot. Uh, Do you ever watch Shoot 'Em Up? That's a really awesome That's movie. That's a movie. <laughs> Never even heard Shoot of Shoot 'Em Up. Oh yeah, we had a count. Oh my god! Die I, lo- I lost count after a hundred. <laughs> I mean, the first mi- the the first like minute the guy has killed like fifty people. <laughs> it's, it, the movie's just. If we crazy. just call that movie America. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a scene where he kills a guy by shoving a carrot in his eye. Nice. That's what yeah. you use carrots for. It, it, it's a must-see movie if you're really into um, Just. action. I like action movies. And that movie has non-stop crazy action. Really liked it. Yeah. So the Assassin's anyway. Creed, the, yeah, the Assassin's Creed movie <laughs> felt like it had this, this, uh, this plot of a dude being controlled and ho- being hooked up to a machine that hooked up to his ancestors' past. Right. And it kind of, and while these people are looking for this device that can control the human mind, but all you saw from your perspective was this guy getting tortured, thrown into a machine, and then badass action scenes. Right. Yeah. So again, that is what I feel, and it's regarded. Assass- the funny thing is that Assassin's Creed movie is regarded as the best video game movie. Well, that's not a high standard. Okay. To hit. And huh. that got really bad ratings. So oh, wow. Huh. Well. The other game. The other well, video I game. Well, who do, who makes the ratings? Who does the ratings? Sweet Tomatoes. Uh, or, Rotten uh, Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Sweet Tomatoes. <laughs> that's what I call Never my baby <laughs> her Sweet Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sweet Tomatoes is actually a salad bar in Houston. <laughs> oh, God. Not I can see why you mixed them both. <laughs> Not good anymore. Uh, I'm more than crouton Sweet Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> the other, the other video game uh, that was turned into a movie that I actually quite enjoyed was the Silent Hill movie. I forgot that existed. You actually went to the theater with me. Somebody and saw yawning. That. Do you hear him yawning? Yeah, he's kind of bored. No, in I what? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's <laughs> not drinking enough wine. That's not how yawning works. Ching. Cheers, to the bus driver. I'm hoping one of those glasses shatter now. <laughs> and I hope it's JD's. Oh, you guys are terrible. So now I ask you guys. <laughs> there goes the bell. <laughs> now I ask you guys, what? What makes a good video game movie? What doesn't? What don't you like about them? Uh, and then what games do you think would make good movies? I haven't seen a good video game movie ever. Yeah, neither have I. I can't say and one, one so movie. My biggest thing is I I played World of Warcraft for like eight years, and I still play it off and on to this day. I love Blizzard as it is, but when they came out with Warcraft, I was like, God, please don't do this. Please don't do this. <laughs> God, don't do it. Um... I don't think I don't think video game 
to movie is a good idea because it's the same reason as taking a book to a movie. It's because now you're trying to take the person's personal experience with the video game or the book and try to make it into what you see. You're going to miss a lot of information. You're going to miss a lot of like the small details that make the whole story kind of thing. And you're just going to miss a lot of things in general. And the reader or the player or the, the viewer is going to see that and be like, they're going to be disappointed. Same thing with like, well, I mean, the biggest one that I could think of would be like Harry Potter move books to movies, right? Everyone mm-hmm. always has a different mo- opinion of like, oh, well, the movies were awesome, but they missed so much from the book and all this and that. So um, that's why you never read the book. Perfect. Oh, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> I did. I, I hated, hated Harry Potter. Only because I would have to think, and all the stupid names they have in Harry Potter. I was like, I, I was, I could not get past the first 20 pages Shit. without going, how am I going to remember all these names? Forget it, I'm done with this That's book. bad, man. Game of Thrones is the worst one. Game of Thrones, I can't even try. Uh, speaking of Game of Thrones, see, I think what, we're, what we've been watching this past week, Westworld would make a great mystery type video game with some action scenes in between they already tried a game of thrones rpg it was terrible mm-hmm. well i'm talking what westworld they tried this they tried a uh, the the dialogue ridden game from uh, telltale games for I game of thrones westworld you couldn't see you oh, couldn't God, see westworld no. as a video oh, God, game no i can barely follow it in, in normal reality <laughs> the, of, of my reality uh, just watching it it's very um, it's too much back and forth and trying to figure out <laughs> left and right and up and down and who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, who's who's not. But that's real. what makes it intriguing. Yeah, See, but you know the show's oh, gonna end in some game. shit cliffhanger anyway. Let's just get to it. Well, yeah, they have already announced the second season. On the uh, on the topic of that though, like with all the mystery, that'd be like them coming out with a Metal Gear movie. Like, there's so many Metal Gear games that, and they're not in order. Like, that's the story isn't in order all the time. So, if you make a Metal Gear game, then people are just going to be confused. Yeah. Or a Metal yeah, Gear movie, sorry. Yeah. You hmm. can't do that. Yeah. Well, what about something like the Uncharted games, where they're very cinematic-based, or or uh, The Last of Us? Do you think that would work as a movie? Nope. Or just as what Kevin mentioned before, there just wouldn't be enough time to flesh it out? Yeah, there wouldn't be enough time. The o- Actually, you know what? There's only one movie that I liked, and it wasn't even... A, it was for the video game, not about it, kind of. And that was Kingsglaive from when Final Fantasy XV came out. And that was oh, from yeah. before the game started, like right at the beginning. So it had really it had to more to do with the universe instead of what the game did. Okay. So that would be like the only good case that I could think about that. But if you make like how Kevin said the game a video the movie about the video game, then you're just you you have to uh, <clears throat> excuse me you have to take out too much, or you have to put in things that don't make sense. And just don't even, they're not even included in the game. And it just, it would just take away from the whole, um, from the pleasure of just watching the movie. Hmm. True question. You just play Until Dawn. It is a movie. Yeah. Or you could just do that. But that's also like six hours long. Six to eight hours exactly long. Exactly why it would be a good normal movie. Exactly. Because I'm interacting with it. So I'm like, I'm doing something. If I was just sitting there watching well, it I mean, until if it focused on... Yeah, seriously. What I mentioned before about Resident Evil, if it focuses on one character, then you wouldn't need to go into what all the other characters are doing. Yeah, but that also ties into what I was saying about uh, Kingsglaive, is it doesn't exactly affect the game universe. It's about it, but it doesn't affect it entirely. Because it's happening elsewhere in the same universe. Hmm. What do you think, Mom? I agree. She agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what they, what she, what they both said. <laughs> I, also I agree what he the said. Movies. <laughs> yes, the oh, universe boy. agreed. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I just haven't seen a good video game movie. I can't think of one. The closest I have is that I played Goldeneye first, and then I saw Goldeneye. And then I was like, oh, I bet in ten years this game, this movie will be real outdated and control bad. Yeah, but like, wasn't 007 made before the games were made anyway? Yeah, but way before, yeah, or super before. It's just like it was. But it's just that a, was also we also did that, right? We did the uh, video games based on movies. 
Yeah, it was bad. We did. And that was... That was... That Golden was Edge just... I don't know. It was, that that's was the closest paper, thing I, I got, but I was thinking more of the game than the movie. The movie wasn't great. Well, yeah, but... It's not one of the best Bond movies. No. Dun, dun, dun. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I put that as your ringtone. <laughs> that is my ringtone. Double <laughs> seven. <laughs> I'm a Bond girl. James. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Yes, yes, I am a Bond girl. Nice. Are you? Oh. Bondage. Oh. oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. This is your idea, Jamie. Don't wine. forget. <laughs> this is all your uh, idea. Cheers to the bus driver. <laughs> oh, awesome. man. So, last night, last night I had you watch the, uh, the trailer to the new Tomb Raider movie. I still haven't done it. And it's more or less oh, based on... Watch? That's what you watched? <laughs> really? Yeah. That was the two... That was oh, the new... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was the new Tomb Raider I, movie that's coming out. I'm having a recall. Out. I was drunk. <laughs> and uh, what, uh, they're, what this one's doing bit. is more or less loosely basing off the two rebooted games, game franchises that come out. Uh, where it's a younger see, that, character. That was kind of action-packed. I, I would go to that movie. I would, too. I would watch that movie. I would go to Tomb Raider. Yeah. It was it, entertaining. It, I, I, it had action. It looked like it had a lot of action. Wait, so so was a new I'm all about action. Uh, probably some British chick we've never heard nice. of, which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You should have Ray from Star Wars do it. <laughs> oh. Um. It looked. It, it reminded me of watching like a cool Rambo type movie, where she's just out in the wilderness kicking ass with a bow and arrow, and right. these badass, yeah. these bad, this bad group is after her, uh-huh. and she's looking for a treasure. Right. It looks very simplistic, action based, and getting to the point. Right. Uh, what about you guys? I don't even. I didn't even know they were going to do another Tomb Raider movie. Yeah. Neither did I. But from what I'm hearing, it doesn't sound like it's going to be this. Obviously, like it, I said before, it won't be the same as the game. But if they're going to focus more on the action than the the mystery about the game, then they're you're going to have a lot of upset people. But at the same time, there'll be people who are like, oh, I didn't even know it was a video game. So, I don't know. Sure. But Tomb Raider's been, a lo- been around since 96 or something? So, 97? So, so is Super Mario. So is Super Mario, but I met, I met someone who didn't even know <laughs> well, who Super Mario was. You want was. to talk about a bad... Uh, movie based on a video game, the Mario Brothers movie. Whoa, 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 hold on. Yeah, let's let's. Okay, that's <laughs> the one. You're not that, allowed that's to the one. Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they released that. the Switch. All right. Yeah. Did you know that if a game comes out on Switch, it's better? Well, yeah. That's what Wolfenstein Two yeah. is going to be. <laughs> it lowers the frame rate, so you can take it all in. <laughs> Mom, would you play a game where you're this uh, crazy American dude who kills Nazis with a with a gun? We're not talking Call of Duty either. Would I play it? Yeah. I, I don't know. Probably not, right? I, don't I'm, decide I'm for a, her. Oh, okay. I won't. I won't influence her decision. <laughs> well, the the games I like, I like racing games. Okay, so you I don't, you drive I, over I don't Nazis. Have to, point and shoot. <laughs> so you drive and hit Nazis. I, yeah, I, I, give me a tank, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> just remake Driver, but instead of having a driver on the city, you just drive over Nazis. Driver over Nazis. <laughs> yeah. I am a Nazi. Oh. No, you, no. <laughs> no, I'm not a Nazi. I'm German. There's that one, oh, there there's one sound clip going to be taken from this podcast. <laughs> Jimmy <am> a- from <laughs> Bruchenspiel, raised by a Nazi. <laughs> Oh, no. Sponsorships lost. <laughs> this just in. Red Leaf Retrocast is a bunch of racists? <laughs> David's tea pulls sponsor? <laughs> David already called me. Mr. David's like, no, no. No more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. T. Mr. Uh, T is very upset. So we'll definitely come back to this question over some of the some of the mystery games that we that we played for the podcast. Would it work as a movie? Um, now, one mystery that we did see last night is Scooby? murder on the uh, <laughs> murder on the Orient on the Orient Express. It's a mystery, which is in Scooby, a very old book. I like Scooby. Made into a movie. Scooby. Would it? <laughs> Calm down, Scoob. <laughs> Do you need Scooby snacks? Drink your wine. I asked 
podcast if we had chips and salsa? No. No. <laughs> no eating on the podcast. No, I already hate myself. That's JD's rules. Just drink on the podcast, crunch, no eating. Crunch. That's JD's rule. Uh, JD has stupid rules, by the way. No PC. <laughs> well, makes sense. Yeah. Unless I pick them. Yeah. I didn't pick any PC Fantasm games, thank you. Gloria. That was one of Josh's uh, picks, but we made it a special pick. Okay. Um... All right. Well, Murder on the Orient Express was 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 a lot of fun, and that brings up the question. Then, what Josh was saying: if a book is made into a movie, you you have to cut out a whole lot. And even I said I thought it was a very good movie. It was a good movie. I couldn't see it. It got all. bad reviews. See, this is the thing, which though. was sad. It was really sad because um, if you've never read the book and you watch the movie, which that I didn't even watch the one that came out in uh, 1977. Um, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised at the movie because I had read such bad things about it. I'm like, I don't know if I want to see the movie, but I'm glad I did because I guess I should watch the movies that get bad ratings. Uh, well, not all of them, but this one, this one brings up the point I'm trying to make about movies today. I couldn't see it as a game, though. All of these comic book movies that are coming out, the Thor Ragnarok, the the Captain America, the... But you have uh, to be familiar with those. Batman, Superman. Not really. Uh, That's all people want to watch today. So would say Murder on the Ori Express, a very well-renowned book um, made into a movie. I doubt that they would even allow them to even make that into a maybe the rights game. just yeah I don't wouldn't, think the wouldn't rights happen because would uh, there are a lot of cinematic based games coming to out today come from the family allowing it and we did play some games on the cast that kind of reminded me of how playing this kind of, this type of if this was made into a game this mm-hmm. would work out the heavy rain the uh, the game coming out Detroit become human where androids become humans kind of like Westworld that we're watching now Mm -hmm. so these are being made so it it is a good question now what movie would be what movie would then become a good game but we know the track record of that that. we've just we've had we've had this discussion on a podcast previously Charlie's Angels Uh, for the GameCube nice (laughs) (laughs) so do you guys then think that the saturation of all these like Marvel and DC comic book movies are kind of this is all that people want to watch now, so anything else that comes out isn't good enough. Well, I mean, uh, kind yes of and no. That, I feel like. Yes and no. Uh huh. I agree with you that they are slowing down with good. it. Good. Because it, it, the market, I think, is getting saturated and people are getting tired yeah, of it. Real. It's kind of like reality shows, too. People are getting tired of reality oh, shows. Oh, just like on like the, all the MTV mm-hmm. shows. Yeah. It, it has, it has are, a grace it, period and then you're done. Not only that, yeah. it's like those movies, like the, all the Marvel movies, they're like two and a half to three hours. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, it's the thing. It's the thing much. that I have with them though is like you have to like that hero or the hero in the movie yeah. if yeah, to be interested exactly. in it. Like if you're into Iron Man, you're gonna see the Spider Man Homecoming, the Well um, and I Avengers and I and stuff, like right? Iron Man. I I do. And I would probably go see another one of that. Um but they are really um sa- I think they've saturated the market and I think it it's on its way mm-hmm. to um it's like remaking old movies. I, it, that that really bothers me. I, Could you I, imagine a remaking of The Shining? So how did you feel about... I think actually, they are. I'm happy that you said The Shining because I was just about to bring this up. How did you feel about the remake about It then? Did you see that? I did not. I never even saw the original. And, I haven't either. And I heard all about it and I, I would like to see the original It and, and then watch and the, then new one. Watch the new one. Um... So, because uh, again, back in back in the day when a lot of those movies came out, um, the, the last really uh, scary movie that I saw was by myself was Poltergeist of all things. I'm surprised you didn't say The Exorcist. Oh, so kind of like kind of a, a, a newish aged movie that came out was um, what was the one on the video camera? 
Oh, oh, yeah, Blair Witch, Witch, Blair, Witch, Witch Project. Project. Well, there was the, there was there's Blair Witch Project. They call them like um, immersive games or something or immersive movies. Found footage because it movies. Found footage. That's what it's called. Yeah. Because uh, it's because you got Blair Witch Project, and then you got and then you got the uh, they made like four of them. Paranormal Activity. Paranormal Activity. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the new version of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were good for uh, a while. Well, just the, the what works for those is they make it like point of view. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but now what up for the it thing? Because you the remake of it. I I haven't seen any of the it's because I I hate horror movies, but I love horror games. I'll let you wrap that around your head real quick. Um, oh, how funny! <laughs> but did you? <laughs> but did you know that it was also like this huge book that Stephen King had wrote? Yeah. Not a lot of really? people knew that. Yeah, it's a huge book. Like it's over huh. like a, like I think fifteen hundred pages. Oh, I didn't know it was that long. It's a wow. huge, it's huge, man. I went to, wow. I went to go, cause I was like, yeah, it's a book, you know, I'll try to pick it up and read it. And I was like, this thing is ginormous. Like it's bigger than my school textbooks, man. Get a Kindle. Get a Kindle. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, you just got the business. How's that feel? Yeah, man. And you know, I'll, I'll get the Kindle. Oh, no then, problem. Oh, 1500 pages too big for you. Why don't you just get a Kindle then? Yeah. Fucking pussy. Yeah. Damn, she um, just told you to the sack the hell? up. Who buys books anymore? I oh, buy my books, goodness. man. I just bought four books yesterday. You buy books? Yeah, I know. I'm a nerd. That's what Amazon's for. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> he's just on fire. But we didn't have oh, we man. don't have our promo code yet, so I couldn't just uh, use yeah. it. Oh, there's always a way to turn it in. Yeah. Well, okay. So speaking of it, I've seen the original and I really like it. the The new one focuses on kids, while the old one kind of focused on adults to a mm. to a degree. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering now if the book kind of covers both perspectives. That's what made the second movie. They already announced a a, a sequel to the new it yeah, movie they're coming focus out. On the elderly this time. I don't know. I think I saw a clown under my bed, Ed, Edna. You, you, you got a frown? What? You got a, no, a clown. I don't care. What is this Jeopardy? On? Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> Look like a clown. Where is Jeopardy? <laughs> I think what the time's the is, wheel on? The price is right as I'll leave me alone. And we got shit. <laughs> The Price is Right isn't on until tomorrow morning. Oh, it's not morning? Martha the, Pennywise. Martha, Your name's Pennywise. Get out of here. Martha the Clown's going to come and kill you. Ah, right, do it. I've been alive for 22 years too long. <laughs> God bless me with long life but a bad back. Fuck you. <laughs> if you're going to kill me, do it now, you pussy. Don't stand in the sewer. Oh, man. I'll come down there and do the job myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh god. Take me to hell. I'll see my dad and tell him what an asshole he was. <laughs> oh boy. Well, uh on on a last note be- uh, before we get into the games, um they 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 did make a a new Friday the 13th game, which was an online experience. Uh it was semi successful. Uh, they had a lot of problems at first i personally don't like it because it's not uh, it bad. i felt like it would have been wor- it would have been better a story more story based mm-hmm. around all the campers instead of just everyone is an individual camper just trying to escape uh jason and it's one go you're done the thing though there was a the problem i have with that oh. though is the idea was already done like the whole you're the bad guy chasing around the four campers or whatever that's the idea's already been done i think it's called dead by daylight it's called any zombie um, game anymore true yeah more or less or so, the uh, not so successful right. uh, it evolve. is it is it is capable to make a game out of anything book movie regardless uh what i think it need it need what, what i think these need is a good idea that's executed well as simplistic as it sounds obviously harder to execute because as mm-hmm. we saw with the murder on the orient express it's a very good book I thought it was a very good movie adaptation. It is possible. Well, it's also possible to have a good movie but not follow the story. Like my biggest example would be probably The Giver. If you watch that giver? movie, no, I don't want to watch that movie. The, movie that? Was, the book was amazing. The no movie read. was pretty good, but the book to the movie was kind of like eh, it's not exact, but you know, it's still a decent movie to watch. What's The Giver? The Giver you was a book even, I had to read in junior high Don, for school. Your mom hasn't even read The Giver either? Holy shit. <laughs> I've never even heard of it. It's a book that I had to read in grade school. You might have been born before the book came out. 
I don't know. So it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been. Uh, someone look up when The Giver came out as a book. On it. Four. So right. I don't know what is came out. Um, I don't read that. The uh, the other the other one I want to reference is the Batman games, the newest, the newer ones. Those are good. The Batman. So Batman's a comic book, made to a movie. The newer movies are are good. Some of the some of the '90s ones are good. The the Adam West TV show is very popular. Yeah. Uh, is Batman just a type of character that translates well? That's another I'm, discussion for another day, I suppose. We could have a whole topic over but Batman. But see, the the whole I'm thing... watching Batman on me TV. Right. They even <laughs> they, yeah. They even have uh, 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 the I TV don't have cable Gotham. anymore. They even I have cable. Gotham. Gotham. cable I went on cable strike. <laughs> Yeah, you have Hulu and Netflix now. Like no, a, like I, have a normal, an, normal I have person. antenna TV. Oh, that's, Jesus. That's right. <laughs> Cables piss me you're, off. They want to charge me way too much money just to watch TV. You're back in the 60s. TV. <laughs> like, screw it. took my asshole. rabbit ears away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a rabbit anymore. <laughs> yeah, now it's yeah, now it's all satellite on bleak. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys want to move on to the games? Yeah, I haven't got that much time left. Let's do this. Yeah, neither, neither. do we. Nice. Hey, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. No, 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 no. You got to be around for a couple. Why? Of them. I gotta, I gotta do my hair. You gotta do your hair. Oh, that's serious business. You can't just stop your mom from doing. All right, hair. the woman's got to do her hair. <laughs> I gotta do my hair, boys. Wait, how about how about you stay for the for the first couple games? Yeah. She's gotta okay. do her hair, JD. <laughs> Please, you played you played them with me. <laughs> stay for the cu- stay for a couple of them. Am I gonna have time for my hair? Yeah, you'll have time. <laughs> so the the we'll do the spe- so we'll do the special game first, which is fantastic. I, I had asked JD if there was gonna be video because otherwise I was not gonna do this. It's a good thing there's no video because I am definitely not suitable to be on camera right now. I also am not oh wearing pants. Oh well, I mean I got pants on. But- <laughs> the earbuds came out. Come back, come back, come back. Wait, I'm pouring the wine. Oh, she need more wine. <laughs> that's a, Pour me some, too. That's an important oh, refill. No All I heard was more porn, please. I <laughs> Dude, I have an idea for the... Okay, I'm not going to... Hold on. <laughs> Your mom gets the refill. I have an idea for the topic. <laughs> Go on, Josh. <laughs> Don't read it out loud. I just... <laughs> That would, that would actually be a really funny topic. Uh, no, we have to we have to say it. No, 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 it'd be a surprise. It'd be a surprise. Oh, it's like that a surprise. That's my <laughs> we already played it. We haven't played Indigo Prophecy oh, though. That's my no, next. Uh, that's, okay. that's my that's my next uh, topic. That's a great topic. Okay, so the first. So this is the mystery topic now. The first game is probably the game you you and I played the most, and that's the special. One which is Phantasmagoria on the PC. The PC games now are this, allowed in the cast. Well, even though we played fucking Umbrella, fucking game. <laughs> umbrella game. I don't remember what it was called. There's some Japanese Umbrella game. <laughs> Resident Evil. So Josh, uh, do you have the? In, you know what? I can I can pull it up. It's fine. Did Josh what? play a PC game? No, because he wasn't allowed. Did Josh play the PC game? No, I'm not allowed to play PC games. I just have you pick okay. my games for me. Okay, so where are you going to oh, ask me? Oh, well. All right, so the, this game is Phantasmagoria. It's yeah. a it's a point-and-click adventure game, which you guys absolutely hate yep. or didn't which want to topic. Which there's not much adventure. Yeah. You know, for a point-and-click adventure, there was no adventure. It's uh, It oh was actually... Oh, my God, it's very frustrating. I, I had to tell JD what to do in some of them. <laughs> so it was developed by uh, Sierra, actually, Sierra Online, a uh, famous point-and-click adventure um, developer at the time, it came out in 1995. But the thing that was the thing that made it so crazy that it was so well, not I shouldn't say it's bad because it's you know everyone loves it, but popular for but the like the popular the reason that it was so mm-hmm. successful is because the chick who made the King's Quest games spearheaded this project. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like Roberta something. I can't remember her last name, but the girl who made or wrote King's Quest developed... Roberta Williams. Roberta Williams spearheaded this this project, Phantasmagoria. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense because it's very, it's very story-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an... It's, 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 it definitely feels like you're unraveling a mystery... The problem is you don't know what the mystery is. The only we played it. The only we played it for a couple hours. 
See, yeah. and nothing happened. I didn't play past the first chapter because, like, okay, so well, that's how long we play. Point and clicks aren't really all that exciting to me as it is. I mean, they do some get do a really good job of like atmosphere and suspense and stuff, um, but they get boring really easily. And the presentation and the premise of the game was kind of boring to me as it was. Like you're this, you're just this woman who explores the mansion of a dead magician, and you go around putting things in your pocket and trying to figure out how you're going to use them in this house. Yeah. So the 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 premise itself, when you read a summary of the game, was was interesting. And and the and this is a game with a lot of history. Yeah. It has a lot of critical acclaim. Uh, this game it had is a, a cult massive classic. budget. It's considered a classic. Yeah, it's a, definitely a cult classic. That's for sure. Uh, uh, cult classic. That's, yeah, that cult classic. Like a, <laughs> yeah, it definitely brings the the cult into it. it um, the game was a financial success. It made twelve million dollars wow. in its in its opening weekend. You see this right here, this yeah. little fact. Uh-huh. Uh, it was one of the best selling games uh, of its of the year it came out. So it was Resident Evil uh, Six. It, it only shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking the nineties though, mid nineties when when the game actually did come out. Well, that's true. That is a lot. For and that, the you know the and the PCs were still. Um, fairly new in in regard to a lot what was going on with PCs at the time. Back when they used to have those commercials like, this is a PC, I'm a Mac. You know, remember those commercials? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. With Justin you know, Ryan. I mean... Yeah. I like those. Uh, so, not surprised that, you know, that was, that would be big for for the time. Now... PC games? Why? Yeah, consoles uh, are better, Josh. Yeah, okay, whatever, buddy. Um, so <laughs> so we played this we played this game through uh, uh, good old games, GOG. Uh, yeah, CD Project Red. Listen up. Right? Um, Those are my boys. The you you so you're 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 a man and a woman. They just moved into this mansion in in this made up town. We think it's in Maine. <laughs> just assuming. Right on the east coast somewhere. That's what it seemed like. Yeah, and uh, only because of the lighthouse and you're 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 near water, so it it looked very New Englandish, eastern <laughs> coast. Yes, location. Uh, so right. it actually like says right remote mansion off the coast of a small New England island. Huh. There you, there you go. go. Uh, is what they do in the you movie. know what? Speaking of small. that, the music. I really yeah, like the right music the in this game. game. Right. Every time she went into the house. Ah. That's what I do every time I pee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Did you guys watch the opening sequence? That's of this, what they did in the thing? opening sequence. She woke up from a nightmare within a nightmare. Her husband got up. Right? She's like, it's okay. And then all of a sudden there was. Ah. <laughs> it's worse I was like, oh my God, feel. Turn, turn it off. Please just turn it off. After a while, you're like, oh, okay, she's in a new place. Ah. No, she's just there. <laughs> she's just there. Ah. I've, I've been... <laughs> I've ah. I personally have been... In, I personally have been really into point-and-click adventure games, and I just... I oh, just God, quit. I'm sorry, JD, you need a new life. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mother. <laughs> And away horn quickly. <laughs> Man, because you just got the business. <laughs> oh, sassy hi, mother. Hi, he needs a new adventure. Hi, 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 hi. I just witnessed a fucking murder. <laughs> <laughs> the murder of my personality and self confidence. <laughs> <laughs> this honestly, this game just wasn't. I, 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 you know, I, I knew what to do. I knew it would take time, but I just wasn't interested because there. You didn't know what the mystery was. I'd rather... You didn't know what your purpose was other than to just wander. Yeah, I'd rather play Mist. Point and clicks for lane. I can wander throughout life in general. Yes. Like, I don't need a point and <laughs> Someone click. Someone who understands. We wandered, we, wandered, we wandered the other night after I couldn't find my way back from the store because <laughs> Rhode Island's complicated to me still. It's pretty small. You just kind of keep going one direction. Oh, man. <laughs> I went in one direction, and I always seemed to go back to Providence. Nice. I was like, "Crap!" <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so <laughs> you get. I I didn't really have much to say about the game other than the music was over intensified the whole time, and you just wandered. 
It really took the. I mean, the best scene was the the scene where you lay in the bed and and hands come out and she's like, "The bed grabbed me," and the and the husband just goes with his with his '90s ponytail. Ah, oh, you're just crazy. Come on. <laughs> He'd have a man like, bun if it were today. <laughs> nice. Hey, man buns are in. Do you have Do you have a man bun? I, I do not. You know, I have a '90s ponytail. <laughs> nice. JD's like sitting behind the, like a magazine stand. Like, yeah, let's say kids. <laughs> I got tips. No, to go I go to the bowling buns. alley. <laughs> yeah, the guy that works in the bowling alley, even better. <laughs> hey, kids, you want a free game? I got some balls for you. Yeah. Oh, no. Blue ones. Yeah. Oh, blue. We can play with the little pins if you like. Take, they can fly, the little ducks. Yeah. Oh, no. Take turns now, kids. Take turns. Why don't you, why don't you roll that, that a little slower so uh, you get the form down? Oh, God. So what did you what did you guys think Jody's of the game? It's trash. All point and clicks are trash. Oh, boy. I just thought the game. Wow. Tell us how you really I feel. I just did. Did you not listen to me? <laughs> um, hey, bitch. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Sassafras over there. <laughs> oh god uh, Josh what'd you think I just thought the game was boring they had no way to really kind of bring you into the mystery so I kind of just played the first they chapter did. And it took forever and, and by the time um, I mean we were into it what for almost two hours and yeah. we only got four four things four items yeah. four mm-hmm. items the only question we got, I we had got, we got the fire poker a dollar. You didn't get the. So I tried to keep. I tried to give key, everything money. Key. I tried to give everything money, and nothing would take the dollar. You didn't even find <laughs> the, the hammer or the matchbook. Well. <laughs> nice. The poker was good. <laughs> I found the matches, but I didn't know what to do with it. Poker. Damn, I barely even know her. <laughs> well, you need to. You sound like you say poker, but you say oh, poker. <laughs> yeah. The- <laughs> Yeah, the game was it yeah. was boring. Didn't really draw you in. The yeah, only question, it was bad. the only mystery I had was why would you take a mi- a mansion from a dead magician? Because fuck him. If he was so magic, he would have stayed alive. So that's he like, died. That's, that's almost as ironic as a psychic coming up to you saying, "Well, I didn't see that coming." No. That- yeah, but it had that. It had the uh, ticket that came out of the. Um, the fortune that, teller. The fortune teller. That was the creepiest thing next to the hands out of the bed. And, oh, you're just crazy. And, and, and then uh, you scrape the mortar, and we're trying to find the scraper. Well, to scrape the mortar, <laughs> and I, there's so many stupid stuff that yeah. made no sense. It was every every clue was very. It, it was almost too cryptic. Yeah, a lot of the time. And then what was the thing on the right? Because we tried <laughs> to make the thing there. There was the skull on the left, and then there was a thing oh, on the right. That was that the it, item. It viewer. was just there. It was an item viewer. You put items in there and you can like look at it. So like the matchbook would have something oh, on the back. Oh yeah. So you can turn the item around. Out. You can look at like the matchbook said something on the back. I don't remember what it said, but like you can turn around and you can look at it. Oh. <coughs> oh well, maybe we've gotten somewhere a lot further then. Yeah, it so wasn't. We, it wasn't we had very... to get further in order to utilize that little feature. No, you can like drag it into the box. I didn't even know you could do that. Oh. There was... oh. Just like the guy, because there was nothing to tell you that you could do that. Like the skull was like a hint giver, and like he would read, we got tell that. you items yeah, and stuff. Yeah, we so. got the skull part. <laughs> so, but we thought you clicked on you. You just clicked on the thing, and nothing happened. I didn't know that you were supposed to drag a yeah, uh, yeah. like the key there, and the key would have said something. Yeah. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. All right. But even then, it's still as you said, Josh. It never drew you in, no. so Mm-mm. very disappointing. Uh, I had high hopes yeah. for Phantasmagoria. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? All right, yeah. So next. we're we're just gonna go down the line. Uh, my pick, and um, after this, you can you can go, mother, to fix your hair. Thank you, dear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this Thank one's you, uh, son. this one is Psychic Detective. This one was uh, dumb. from the 3DO. This was the worst one. <laughs> Game sucks. <laughs> Janine picks the weirdest, stupidest games on this. Wait, come back. What? <laughs> Baddest. Why was it so dumb? Because it was just dumb. It, it, it was the 3DO. It was so Did dumb. you play it? Yeah, I was on the 3DO. But we can't pick PC <laughs> games. You gotta pick consoles yeah, that everybody's no, you got. got. Pick, yeah, everyone's got a 3DO and a Jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> See, at least I picked a game on the and freaking... And an Atari 5200. Oh, yeah, which is coming from well, Amazon. Because you use promo code... <laughs> 
So let, anyway. let me ask you, does JD pick uh, games, yes. something and then, okay, and then does Josh pick a game and then Kevin pick a yes, game? Yes, that's how it works. two games, two. Uh-huh. which he expects me to play in like we two weeks and I don't have time for that shit. Three weeks. Three what weeks you, generally. What? You don't have time for that shit. What do you mean you don't have time? What? 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 What, do you, what do you got? What do you got doing? <laughs> what, what, what do you got better in your life? <laughs> Oh no! All right. I would love to say so. School, Psy- but... So, Psychic Detective was on the 3DO. It's it's another kind of interactive uh, movie based game because that's what the 3DO was kind of known for. It's, game, it's, man. You the whole the whole thing was fo- full motion video. It's on three discs. Yeah, and you play about 20 minutes of of a disc at a time. Yeah, you can play 20 minutes and shut it off. Cause that's what I did. What yeah. year was this game made? Uh, 1995. 95. Damn it! Oh. Also, 1995. It was made. It was developed oh. by EA Electronic Arts, the uh, the killer of studios. It, uh-huh. I thought it was public. I thought it was it was published and developed by EA. Yeah, that's Electronic what Arts. Yeah, that's what I said. So they, they, they yeah. I hate them so much. So electro, uh, we we mentioned this before. How Electronic Arts was like the thing 3DO had. Okay. Uh, when it came out, because the, the, the back in the nineties, uh, right? So the the uh, the founder of EA also founded 3DO, so they had exclusive rights to EA at first. So if the 3DO survived, who knows? Maybe EA still would only be on the 3DO and not destroying everything. Many else. future games like Titanfall Two. That's over or your Madden head. or oh, no, NHL okay. or FIFA. Or so this, ga- this game, this game, you're you're, you're 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 this game was super late eighties, well, but it play- took place in the nineties. Who played it? I played it. I beat the it game like three times. Oh, so you made someone else play it. Yeah, this play his, it. This is his stupid pick. Oh. So we pick, yeah. we pick, we get six <laughs> So games. JD liked it and you guys said it I sucked. didn't say I liked it. I said it was just meh. He just keeps so, picking oh. games that he knows he's so not going to So then why'd like. you make them do it? Why'd you make them go person. through the pain? Because it was a mystery. It was a mystery game and I wanted to, I wanted what to know you? what it's about. Oh, uh, also, is this all mystery games? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that is the topic that we're playing. Because uh, <laughs> he's a bad person. So there you go. So now it makes it, makes it all. And a lot of together. them have this kind of horror. Oh. A lot of them have this kind of horror <laughs> essence to them because yeah. I don't know, it's video games and Halloween uh, was around the time. I thought it'd be a good uh, thing. Okay. So there's 14 different endings Halloween's to the game. Over now. <laughs> Like, yes, you are correct. This, this was There's 14 game, different man. endings. You go, you go, 14 you, different endings? Yeah. I got three of them. I don't have time for this. You, uh, I got <laughs> three out of 14? I got yeah. none of them. I got, got one, none. I got one twice, so I played it four times technically. So, David, you got what? I mean, Kevin, you got I what? I got 20 minutes in the game and shut it off. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty. It's, it's pretty really bad. And Josh, what did you do? I played it for like five minutes and got to the part where like, hey, this is the house. My dad jumped out of that window, and I was like, ah, I've seen enough here. <laughs> you should find him. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you started. And JD that was... and JD played it for how long? I played the whole game for. <laughs> So here's oh here's here's my experience with the game. Mom, you okay. played it for you played it for ten minutes and said, "I'm I'm done." So there was a psychic pimp, and he goes and he performs in these old, not even like a club, it's more like a lounge to these old people for three Story reasons. Story of my life. Yep. He plays he these three reasons. I can't remember what the three reasons are. It's like I make quick cash, I get the groupies and oh, some shit. Oh god, that movie that 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 whole thing was so stupid. Yeah, this like this wasn't even a game. It was just it's a movie. So and then like stupid. at the end, he or like at the end of his little presentation thing he sees this girl they lock yeah. eyes and they have a conversation in the back and you know there's a great great conversation started when you first meet a girl or a guy right my dad's dead <laughs> my dad killed himself oh that's a shame it's a yeah here's all this an icebreaker here, it's a fir- here's definitely an icebreaker yeah, so so this russian chick yeah, goes in the yeah. club he has a cheesy like dick tracy type line her eyes said I couldn't resist, but she's... No, her eyes uh, took my soul, but we went to hell instead, or something like that. Yeah. yeah um, oh, God, it was so bad. It was <laughs> stupid. This the whole was dumb. game is it like that. So with, I give with those super, cheesy lines. I give new psychic power. Find who killed my father. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have this idol that controls mind. You must find four of them to, ve- to defeat cult guy. <laughs> That's the whole game. It was stupid. The, and you just uh, try to find, as you play... So for you guys, since you guys didn't play, well, no, because like best. the way to play the game is you gotta flick through their, so bad. flick through each. Well, yeah, you're right. You have to flick through each person's consciousness, and I'll give it this: it was cool because it was basically a movie shot like in a bunch of different perspectives. So you can go flawlessly and seamlessly through conversations if they're talking to the same person, 
But like, uh-huh. yeah, I got to the part where this cousin was trying to sell me a watch and I was like, man, I don't need this bullshit. And I just turned it off. <laughs> I was done. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, so to, to skip, to skip forward here, basically, Josh, as you say, you skip through people's con- consciousnesses, you find key items, you discover that there's this cult leader who's taken advantage of these idols that you have to find, which is, which makes you crazy if you use the idol the wrong way. Uh, and that's what this cult leader is doing. You find these key items to, in order to to play this Russian game called Black Diamond, and you pit you pit these. It all ends up you you get into this mind battle with the cult leader, and you play the Russian game called Black Diamond, in which then he he has key items to play against your key items, and it's I never figured out what key items were better than others. Uh, so that's why the fourth. It took me four times to truly beat it. <laughs> Stupid. You, you can go through the game. You can and, go through the and, game. And you can go through the whole game in thirty minutes. Honestly, you spent too much time on this. But I, you know, yeah. I gotta, uh, I gotta take so off, JD, for like a second. Kevin, you gotta yeah. go. Sorry, guys. All right, Love Kevin. You. Bye. Uh, See you. Bye, Kevin. Sorry. Love you. It was I nice meeting you. Yeah. See you, Kev. Bye. Bye. Sorry, you couldn't. You couldn't stay. No, it's okay. My day become a cluster. Fuck. I love you all. Yeah, it's it's all right. We understand. It's Bye, okay. guys. We're just all's good. good for your time. No, uh, no I'm, worries. I'm good for yeah. myself. Thanks, thanks, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So peace out. <laughs> I got seven out of the fourteen endings. Uh, he goes crazy in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the the good ending I got finally was he just essentially kisses the Russian chick. It's not very satisfying. No, it's almost as satisfying as seeing him rub her knee and be like, oh, "I'll pay you in other ways." Be like, "Ha ha." Yes. Do you have any further offers? You saw that that yeah. sexual right. harassment in 2017. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even just talking to her. Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> right? It was pretty rough. Yeah. Um. So that psychic detective. Uh, would not recommend it, even for a 3D owner. No, I just I gave it the good old college try, but I got too bored of it. So yeah. Uh, so the next. Yeah, but aren't aren't a lot of your old games old concept though? Too. I mean. Yes, it's a very old concept. It was the full motion video was something that was part of its time. They okay. thought it was the next big thing. That was the whole attraction. However, all these full motion video games were filled with terrible acting, terrible writing, and the games just weren't all that great. See, I can get I can get over that, but it's the fact that like the mystery itself wasn't even all that enticing. Like I didn't care to find out what was going on. It it's like watching an old movie or something. I mean, you you wanna you you want to be attracted to that because it comes from the time, and and you want to watch that. You want to be a right. ex, you want to experience that. But if if it's lacking the draw, like it needs to draw you in. Mm-hmm. And just like any good movie or or bad movie, if it's a bad movie, you've lost me after five minutes. Yeah. If, it, right. if it's and even though it's say um, supposedly really good and everything for the time. If it doesn't draw me in anymore, I'm not going to go any further. Yeah, it depends yeah. on if it's I'm age done. as well. I, you've lost me. Yeah, like this game so, definitely didn't age well at all. No, yeah. it didn't. Yeah. Uh, one game that I think did age well is my other pick, which is Snatcher on the Sega CD. Snatcher was sick. Uh-huh. Snatcher was actually really cool. I wanted to keep playing it. I, but... I really liked this game. Uh, I'd, I'd never played it in English. What I've... Only uh, I finally played the game in English for the podcast. I had to do it from a, from an en- en- emulator, mm-hmm. uh, but I do Emulator's have the Japanese race. version on the Sega Saturn, so I do own the game. Yeah, um, uh, it was a good game, honestly. Like I really enjoyed it. I liked it even better the fact that it was published and developed by Konami and was made by Hideo Kojima. Yeah, so that's by your dude Josh uh, Metal Gear, the Metal Gear that's Solid my guy. Man. Now, Mom, I'm going to describe this game to you. And you tell me if you like it, the way it sounds. Okay? Okay. Go. It focuses on these uh, these androids bio-roids. that have... What are They're they? They're called bioroids. Bioroids. Okay. You know what? This would be more fun. Josh, you describe it to my mom <laughs> and see if she likes it. Okay, so we're set in the distant future. 
and uh, it's when jazz electro jazz is very popular. And there's these bioroids, <laughs> these bioroids come up, and they what they do is they kill people and they take their place, kind of like the um, what's that one movie where like these invasion of the body invasion snatchers. of body snatchers exactly. That's kind of what I thought the game was going to be about. Um, so what they mm-hmm. do is they kill the people and they take over their bodies and they live as them, and they kill more people and stuff like that. So you are this guy named Gillian, and th- he was found three years ago in Siberia by the army. And he and his wife had no memory of what happened before that. So I kind of have, like, my own theory about that whole thing. Um, but I have to play the game more to kind of go into that. So, so are they uh, actual people? They are actual people. Or these are, are they... these are human people. They're not androids or anything. These bioroids uh, called okay. Snatchers. So they were frozen? They, they were f- they, we don't know. They kind of just say we were found by the army in Siberia. Oh, okay. So they're not telling you if they're they were frozen and they were thawed and now they're people again. Th- well, they have back in they a have new like time. A case of amnesia, so they could have just been found. Like I don't actually know entirely how they were found. Okay. But basically, the story focuses on as you as Gillian are this thing called a junker, which is like an elite police squad, basically, which has to figure out where these bioroids came from because they came out of nowhere, and you have to figure out where the people are, who's getting killed, who are actually the the snatchers and you got you're basically have to try to stop them it's all it's and and they they function like terminators almost yeah. they even look like terminators yeah. oh, okay yeah and so what what do you have to do you have to what's the, the so the snatchers they kill the people and they take their place and you have to try to find the snatchers and destroy them oh, okay so this is kind so of that's a whole game yeah that's find well, it seek and destroy basically there's more to it but you know it's that's your synopsis. Yeah, quick synopsis. The um, there's small there's small shooting scenes, uh, but it's few and far between. Uh-huh. They were a nice little distraction. You just you just match up your cursor with a box and shoot things coming at they you. They were a nice little distraction. The, the, yeah, the it's crux. A PC the, game? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, it's a it's a, uh it's on a Sega console. Oh. Okay. Uh, but the crux of the game is you're you're interacting dialogue and learning the story. As you go along, yeah. So mm-hmm. and you uh, you okay. use the, these these texts to interact with objects, interact with characters, and so on and so forth. And you play you play the story that way, like the first okay. and, and unravel the mystery uh, a foot. Like one of the first things you walk up to is you walk up to this receptionist and has like talk, investigate, ask all these things. So you can, like talk to them and they'll say a thing back to you, and you can ask them questions and like have little interactions. And, like, there would be parts where, like, okay, do you want to go to this place, this place, this place, or this place? Okay, I want to go here. And you can investigate that room and look around. And the game actually gets really interesting because once you figure out the, basically, what I told you, the synopsis of the game and, like, what you're about, you go to this factory Mm -hmm. and you have to explore this factory. You have to look through all these things. And it's this, honestly, it's really, for a game that's made in 88, it was... It was not only cool. Yeah, it was not only was it made very well. It actually had some voice acting in it, which is rare for a game back then. Uh huh. Well, that's yeah. why that was the whole appeal of the Sega CD was. But not only was there because Se- Sega didn't really last very long. No, no, it didn't. Sega was what two? Th- it didn't, well, not only like three years. It didn't last five. Well, the Master System came out. And the Dreamcast was their last deal, so they really only lasted maybe fifteen years. Yeah, they didn't last very long. Um, yeah, see, it seemed like five for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> which I mean, truly, fifteen years isn't very long when you compare it to Sony and Nintendo. You know, yeah. they're, they're the su- survivors. Well, Nintendo's the long survivor. Atari's yeah. gone. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, f- I feel Xbox is now. Reaching their limit as well, honestly. Uh, I don't I think, think so. so. Uh, that's a topic for another day. I don't think so. Microsoft, um, Xbox is too big to just die. Oh, oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, well, I, I, Xbox, well, let me rephrase yeah. that. Then uh-uh. I think Xbox yeah. console wise has seen its day. I think it's done console wise mm. because it's Microsoft. I think right. it'll do like a Steam I, I, thing. I think you're probably right on well, that. Well, they're already going. starting where it'll yeah. just be a digital-based yeah. thing on a computer. They're already starting to integrate a lot of Maybe. the games into like yeah. Windows 10, but uh, as, exactly. as for the console, yeah. I don't think that's ever going to die. But at the same time, you can say the same for PS4. But this is a topic for another time. 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, to not spoil much of the story, I really enjoyed Snatcher. I've played uh-huh. it multiple that times. Really cool, though. It's a very yeah. satisfying ending, oh as yeah. opposed to, say, Psychic so Detective. Cool. Yeah. It was so but cool. But 1988, I mean, you're talking almost... 30 years yeah yeah it's 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 yeah. very good it, it's got this anime kind of drawing to that's it as long, well that's a long time for a, a it's really nice yeah. I was just it was interesting because like, you can make so many choices that can make the game go deep or you can just be like okay hey, I make this choice and this choice and move on with the game and what I personally loved the most was you actually got a little robot assistant named Metal so was that made here in the United States no I no, no it's a Japanese base oh it's a Japanese yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so I just thought it was really interesting my favorite part was you got this little robot assistant called Metal Gear and that's really cool uh-huh. because the company that made this game made a series called Metal Gear and this game was actually made before all of that but takes place after the series yeah uh huh so and it was really cool oh. because he the, the guy Harry which was the engineer or whatever is like this is Metal Gear he's not as violent or aggressive as like the the models that we've made way back when but you know <laughs> he's really cool I was like oh my god that's awesome Plus, did you get to the first, did you find the first, uh, did you get to the first factory? Like, did you get through it? Oh, yeah, I got through the whole game. The fir- I got past the factory, and when I heard that scream, I was like, oh, wow, okay, I'm into this. <laughs> I was like, I'm into this. Yeah, and then- it's 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 a really, it's see, this is Scary? a mystery game. Well, it's, it's it gives you a sense of thrill uh-huh. for the mystery. Uh-huh. You want to solve it. Uh-huh. You want to know who are, what's happening. Who are the you snatchers? want to know why these bioroids, these snatchers, these terminators are uh-huh. doing what they're yeah. doing, where uh-huh. they're coming from. Uh, it's something that the other two games we mentioned didn't do. No, they had no draw. They had nothing to them. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then these other games uh, also have their own kind of feel to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So snatcher, high marks. Uh, next game is Josh's pick. We're on to your picks yes. now. Uh, the first one is Eternal Darkness, which was awesome, and uh, on the GameCube. But I'm going to do my hair now. So you're yeah. going to go do your hair because you didn't I'm play sorry, a lot Josh. of these at this That's point. <laughs> uh, we got through the three that you had the most experience with, sort of. It's really nice meeting you, Josh. Well, Donna. <laughs> Take so care. So it's going to be me and Josh from now on. No. So we've lost now two of the four people. No, this podcast that's okay. is dying. <laughs> uh, well, Kevin's been busy with his with his brother going out on deploy, and uh, you know, with me and my move. Yeah, no, it's um, been very busy. I like to say I've been busy it's, too. It's been but, a, it's know. been a hectic month, so we're just doing the best we can with mm-hmm. with the with the time allotted. Exactly. I'm sure our loving fans will understand. Mom, could you not run the sink? While we're recording. <laughs> was that a problem? Yes, it was a problem. <laughs> I'm done now. Okay. So, Josh, this was Eternal Darkness. Now, wow. I got three hours into the this game. This game was awesome. Honestly. Honestly, this game was uh, awesome. I, I mean... So, why don't, you, why don't you tell everyone about Eternal Darkness of the of the Requiem Mind or whatever it's called. Uh, et- uh, <laughs> Eternal... S- Sanity Eternum or something like that? I can't remember. Uh, Sanity's, Sanity's Requiem. Requiem. That's what it's called. Um, so, I just want to start off by saying you know you're in for a ride when one of the first things you're introduced to is a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, really? I yeah, didn't know that. I don't remember what the quote is, but it's like... It starts with an Edgar Allan Poe poem quote, and I was like, yeah, we're in for a good ride. Um, so, basically, you're this guy... Um, this guy named Max, he's a clinical psychologist? I can't quite remember. It was this guy named Max. He stumbles upon this book, and basically what it does is he dies. He he, he dies, and his daughter, I think her name's Alexandra. I'm butchering these names right now. Oh, my God. It's fine. You're good. Um, gets a call because she's on the police force, and she finds out that her grandfather was killed. So she goes to the mansion that her grandfather lived at and trying to figure out what happens. When she gets there, she finds out that his head was fucking bitten right off, and nobody right. knows how he died. There's no break-in. There was no struggle. It's just His head is gone. Um, so basically, you're this girl trying to figure out what happened to your grandfather, and you find this book called... the I don't remember. I'm just going to call it The Book of Evil. I'm really fucking up these names. So she finds like his, her father or grandfather's diary it's, and starts reading it's it. It's like a diary mixed in with a book that was already made. But the thing is, it's not just like a normal diary. It's about like cults and ancients. This, first of all, this is a very HP Lovecraftian game. You can't say it's not. Yes. Because, oh, I love it. 
Oh my goodness. But yeah, you find this diary slash book and you, f you find out that your grandfather was actually like dabbling in like these black cultic rituals and going through all these things and you he believes that he was being followed by someone or something like a spirit was taking over and he ends up dying because basically a monster comes in and eats his fucking head. So that's what happens to her grandfather. But now you got to figure out more. Why did what happened? With, why did this monster come here? Why was my grandfather so obsessed with this? Like all this stuff. So it was just, like, but it hooks you right off the top, which is the, it was like the psychic detective didn't do that. Phantasmagoria didn't do that. It was it was quick to know what your purpose was, yeah. which I really appreciated, especially after playing something like Phantasmagoria mm -hmm. and even Psychic Detective, because yeah. one had the purpose. It was just the purpose. There was nothing yeah. else to it. And then one was none. Um, this one, uh, for the time, was made by Silicon Knights, yeah. uh, who later went bankrupt, but they did a lot of good Game Boy, or not Game Boy, GameCube ports, yeah. such as the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes uh, I like remake to, of the first one. I like one. to say Silicon Knights had a very bad case of Rare. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to to go about yeah, it. So um, there's been talk lately of Eternal Darkness coming back. Nintendo wants to bring it back, but oh I don't I don't I don't see it happening honestly. They, if they do do that, that could that could either be very good or very bad because that game was already yeah. very good as it was. Like this game was an absolute mind fuck. Honestly, this game was able to scare me without actually having any jump scares, just simply from the audio and the little tricks it would do to you. See, I wasn't. I wasn't scared as much as I was interested in what was just happening. Yeah, it was more like a... Uh, sorry, uh, be, not a scared, but more like a suspenseful, you know? Yeah, yeah. It felt like, more like a suspense thriller. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, I know it's qualified as a psychological horror because, for sure, it, it focuses on, on psychology throughout the game. Mm -hmm. but, because what, what the game does is, as the chick, the main yeah. chick, is reading the diary or the book of the dead or whatever it may yeah. be because she finds multiple books upon what she's yeah, doing each one's... but what happens is as she's reading she goes into these past experiences mm -hmm. fighting or experiencing this godlike figure the ancients, that's yeah. trying to yeah an ancient and you have three choices of which which ancient you're gonna face and that essentially makes the game harder uh, yeah so what that does is that actually chooses the difficulty but that also affects different puzzles further on down the line. Right. And also helps and also make affects which monsters are more likely to spawn than other ones. Yeah. Which I thought justifies multiple playthroughs, which mm. you don't see very much today at all. No, because yes, I mean the game doesn't like the, that choice where you choose your ancient you're gonna follow doesn't change the game entirely. But it does change the game enough to be like, okay, this is a lot, this is quite different than last time. Yeah. Um, uh, but the game I felt does start off pretty slow. Yeah, but I mean, for all a lot of mystery and puzzle games, they tend to do that, but they still drew you. That in. was very consistent with with our theme yeah. here. I just uh, what I thought was funny was when I hooked this up, uh, finally, and it opens up and it says. You are now going to a mansion in Rhode Island. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, I just moved to Rhode Island. Am I gonna <laughs> go into eternal darkness? <laughs> but I, I love it because the the best thing about this game, and I'm sure you can agree, was the sanity meter. I thought it was very interesting. I really liked the whole mechanic oh, to it. The how meter was so when you cool. kill the thing that's taking your sanity away, you gain it back. Yeah. But upon each main... So what happens is she reads different sections of the diary and she goes into that section. Yeah. So the first one, as an example, she goes into this, like, Roman soldier. Yeah, pious. And uh, you go through what he experienced. Yeah. And he ends up actually and, being the final bad guy. Right, because he is the one that's taken over by the god yeah. entity and or a servant of the entity. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say and you fight before. him... Uh, I didn't play the whole yeah. game, but I got a very good idea. It was it was pretty cool. Um, I did play it on my CRT TV. Yeah. So when your sanity meter goes down, you start the character and you yourself, the viewer, they try, they try to get the psychological aspect. Yeah. Try to make you yourself think you're going kind of 
quote unquote insane. Mm-hmm. So one of the one of the game one of the things this game's famous for, which I've already known about, was when the character goes through uh deplete the sanity is depleted, the volume meter on your TV will come yeah. up. And it's in in this case it was vertical. Yeah. And I was like, well, my TV's horizontal, so this is the point we were talking about. But the game's volume actually does go lower. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to hit volume on your TV yep. to go up, but nothing's happening. That was like a neat little trick that uh, they did with um, uh, Snatcher. Metal Gear. Yeah, in Metal Gear 2, but yes. in Snatcher, it's like, do you hear that? I can't hear anything. Well, maybe you need to turn up your volume. Um. Yeah, I don't, it, it, yeah there, there's a lot of fourth wall breaks, which really gets you into it so the whole premise is the character is slowly going insane or she thinks she is her mind can't comprehend what's happening in front of her i don't think the game does too good a too good a job with dealing with how the character is feeling but it definitely gets the viewer to go Mm -hmm. through some fourth wall breaks to feel something like that cool because each character you played was different like pious was really strong um uh, the chick, I can't remember her name, she had, like, a lot of magic power or whatever, like, a lot of the, I think it was magic right. power, and there was, like, this older fat guy, not fat guy, but the bigger guy that had low sanity, so, like, it was hard to keep him to not freak out, but the coolest thing about the sanity meter was, like, it would do, it would make your character hallucinate, like, you would be a thing where, like, you get a gun, and you have to shoot this thing, but instead it shows your character shooting yourself, you're like, what the fuck, and then it slaps back to reality, or, like, one that I love and my cousin oh my god he made me feel like an asshole there's one where if your sanity meter gets low enough your game actually goes blue screen of death yeah like it like the old computer yeah. thing like it goes like your the game boot us is not working so like that happened my cousin looked at me like what did you just do and I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't and then it went back to the game I was like what <laughs> what <laughs> Well, there's even some PC games that come out on Steam that that do that, mm-hmm. or it, like purposely crashes. Um, uh, Undertale did that. I never played Undertale. When you fight yet. the final final boss, well, when you fight the final boss in Undertale, it, like crashes Steam on purpose, yeah. and you have to reboot Steam, and then it puts you right back in. When you put your save back, it puts you right back in the fight. He's like, "Ha ha! Did I do anything to your computer?" <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's fun things like that. So I really liked Eternal Darkness. Uh, I was really hoping for something more scary, but what I got was definitely a more interactive kind of experience. Yeah, it's definitely more of um, it's it's just it deals with more like the monsters trying to fuck with the world kind of thing instead of something trying to yeah. fuck with you. So it's next. To, it was pretty yeah. cool. I'd like to definitely see a uh, even a spiritual sequel to this. I would even uh, like something to see like in like a today's instead of a sequel. Uh, I'm not sure how they would reboot that's the, it. That's the thing, right? Because of all the fourth wall breaks. But if they can do something to, like, you have to hook up your phone, because the 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 PlayStation Four Play Link is happening right yeah. now, where you hook up your phone, right? Okay. Um, and Nintendo has their little Nintendo yeah. app. So could you imagine you have to hook up the app to the phone? You're talking to like a bot, and the bot kind of talks to you the whole game yeah. and kind of fucks with or you. Like you get a phone call from someone. It's like what the fuck. Or the app starts ringing like a phone. Yeah, and like it actually, it's like something from the app calls your phone. You're like, okay. And if you don't answer it, something bad happens to you in the game. Or like you don't get the right ending. Yeah, something tied into your to, to your smartphone I could see totally happening. Yeah. Uh, that would be really cool. So uh, I have I have pretty high marks for Eternal yeah, Darkness. Yeah, me too. I love Eternal Darkness. It's awesome. Uh, I, really liked, I really liked what fighting sequences there were where you can pick off body parts oh. and then you have to finish the enemy so your sanity yeah. meter comes back. And the other thing too is like things that you would do with like the different characters actually affected what happened with the characters further on down the line. So it makes it seems like you're actually going through history and like every action you're doing actually matters further on down the line. Also, I yeah. figured out that 10 days ago, okay, if we would have done this before November 1st in Europe, we would not be able to do this game. Uh-huh. November 1st, 2002 was when this game was released in Europe. <laughs> So well, it's okay. The game qualifies. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, fifteen years is the yep. limit. So high marks. What doesn't get high marks for me immediately is Josh, your next pick, which was Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred well, Frights, and I played it on the you Xbox. You didn't like my other ones. I played on the PS2, but I, you didn't like my other picks, so I said fuck you. This was I chose this game as a joke and a punishment for JD because he likes to veto, <sighs> if not one of my games, all of them. But yeah, I also used to play this all the time. With my when I was like ten or so, my sister would watch me play it all the time. So, 
Tell us about Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Okay, Freight. so it was developed by Heavy Iron Studios, published by THQ, and it came out May 20th, 2002. And I also found out that in the PAL regions, like Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, and Oceania, this came out November 22nd. So this is technically not retro yet for them. For, for them. them. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, like I said, I chose this game as a joke or punishment. Um, this game was corny, but, like, it was corny in a way that it still captured the spirit of the Scooby-Doo cartoon better than, like, the movies did, in my opinion. Uh... Like, it was just silly. Like, so, what happens... Okay, so, what happens is the mystery gang is they're going out, again, by the seaside, because everything happens. It's scary. That's by the ocean. Um, you go to this mansion, and I think it's Daphne's friend, Holly, is like, yeah, something happened to my uncle, Alexander Graham, which, hmm, I wonder what, where they could have got that inspiration from. Um, right. anyways, like, it's very Scooby Doo. Yeah. It's very yeah. Scooby Doo. They seem to know everybody, and something happened. Yeah. Um, so they yeah. go to this mansion, and this girl says, "My uncle, something happened to my uncle. He was just about to release like this invention that could have changed the world, and something happened to him." So go in there and find it out. So that's basically the game right there. It's it's got the it's 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 a janky platformer, is what I would call yeah, it, absolutely. and this falls into what I would qualify as. Uh, a game that's shadowed by nostalgia glasses yeah. for a lot of people. Like, uh, the the best example I could have is uh, SpongeBob Bikini Bottom, Battle of Bikini Bottom, or whatever it was yeah. called. Came out the, around the same time. It's a janky platformer. It 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 sure it you could say it fits the spirit of what the franchise is. Yeah. But is it a good game? I would highly disagree. Oh, absolutely not. This game is by no means a great game. If you guys want to go out and check it out, then whatever. But um, this is not by no means a great game. Uh, I just I like that the fact that they personified the spirit of Scooby Doo, the cartoons. They tried from like yeah. from the cheesy monsters, the dark mansion, the silliness of the cast and characters. Like it just did a really good job, in my opinion, of capturing the spirit of what Scooby Doo was. They just didn't make it into a very good game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, every the elements were there because, as you said, Josh, they 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 go to the manor because the Scooby Gang member of the Scooby Gang knows somebody. Something happened. In this case, the mastermind yeah uh, kidnaps members of the Scooby Gang, including the uncle. Yep. And you're for you you play as Scooby, yep. platforming, collecting Scooby snacks and in each area and power ups. Uh, and you and Scooby meets various enemies from Scooby from the Scooby Doo shows past. Yeah, there's tw- I think it said there's 20 of them. There's 20 old there's, ones. There's there's a lot yeah. of them. Uh you you see you see the caveman and ice. The black knight. Uh ghost of captain cutler, uh which is zombie, werewolf, etc. They're the main enemies and occasionally you come across a boss fight. Yeah. Now I played this for I think 3 hours and never really came across a boss battle. Yeah, you don't. There's not really uh, much of them. There's like a lot of monsters that you would see in the show. Like I know one of the one of the boss monsters is the Black Knight, which is fine. Yeah. That's one of the original villains. I I, I grew up a huge Scooby Doo fan. There's actually a, a game I do recommend from Scooby Doo. It's called uh, Scooby Doo Mystery on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. Of course, it's, that's a point and click adventure Scooby Doo one on where the it's Genesis and of course it's point and click. <laughs> well, I I. I, I you know, there's there's a couple things you may not like, but yeah. I do highly recommend this Scooby that Scooby Doo game. Yeah. This one is a janky platform. It's a collect 'em up. It was a product of the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it does not hold up. I couldn't play it very. Well. I was I could see definitely a lot of the Scooby Doo lore to it. Not lore, but yeah, just the story. The story to it. It. I mean, that was all fine, but the game was shoddy. I didn't care about the mastermind because I wasn't interacting enough with it. Yeah, I did. I, I just felt like I was jumping around collecting Scooby snacks the whole time. Yeah, so I wouldn't say this game was absolutely horrible, but this is more of a middle of the pack kind of game for me, anyway. Yeah, you know, I was. I was kind of when I saw that, I'm like, ah, it's probably not very good. <laughs> when you picked it, and sure enough, yep. Well, you didn't like my pick, so, so that's what you get. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's still a mystery. That's what Scooby Doo is about: exactly. is solving the mystery of the person who did the thing. Exactly. <laughs> so, we're on to Kevin's picks now, and of course, he's not even here. So, we're gonna consult cardboard cutout console Kev one again, once again. He's back. It's okay. It's okay. He's he's got his precognitive conditions to go yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
So his first game was Clue on the Sega Genesis. <laughs> this guy would pick Clue. <laughs> I thought it was a, I thought it was an interesting pick because Clue, if people aren't familiar with, it's an old board yeah, game. Honestly, I I honestly don't even think there's really much to be said about the game. I mean, as a board game adaptation, I thought it was presented pretty well and the scenarios were funny, but overall, I'd honestly just rather play the board game. My mom says it's from the 60s, so she just yelled at me from the bathroom fixing oh. her hair. <laughs> Sorry, Donna, this game was made in 92. Yeah, she yeah she would play the board game with me, but she wasn't interested in playing the video game. She's like, why don't we just play yeah, the board exactly. game? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's like, The game is only, itself is only 10 minutes long. Back in the day is what she said. Yeah, so... so. Um, I didn't say I, I don't think this was a horrible game by any no. means. It's exactly the board game where uh, you you pick a little pay, piece, you know, whether you're Colonel Mustard or, uh, you know, yeah, who, um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Professor Plum, Dr. Brown, whoever it may be. There's a man. There's a manner you have to go around to each room so, and then you for those go to the room and guess who. Yeah, done so it. for those that don't know what uh, Clue is, Clue is. There's Mr. Body Died in the mansion, and you got to find out who killed him, in what room, and how. So that's how you figure the game out. And every time you go into a room, you get a clue card, I believe? Uh, yeah, so you can you can kind of... What you do is you guess... Yeah, so it's a... It's, it's what happened, and then someone goes, well, it couldn't be Mr. Plum in the observatory with the wrench, because I have the wrench. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then you write... So you kind of mark it down. down to the case, so this guy's got the wrench, so... But Mr. Plum is still up for debate, so... Right. So it's like, okay, well, he didn't say Mr. Plum and the observatory wasn't it, but he definitely said the wrench. Yeah. You, you know, it's a little marking down, you gotta think. Mom, you wouldn't like these games, right? Okay. She has to think, so she don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like I said, though, it, like for a board game adaptation, it's it was presented fine. Some of the scenarios are funny, like the cutscenes are kind of funny. But like I said, I'd rather just play the board game. The game, like the board game, I felt yeah. takes longer than the game did. Yeah, so I played my first time playing trying trying this out was I played with uh, me and five computer players. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Lasted five that's the minutes. Other thing too, like you can play this a six-player game with the same controller. So that was like the other cool thing you could do with your friends. But then at the same time, just fucking get the board game. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, I feel I feel like a good number is three to four people to play yeah. this. Uh, that way, you get at least 15, 20 minutes out of it, and uh, that way you get the full experience. If you play any less or more. It's it's either going to be boring or too quick where you can't enjoy yeah. it, and the video game is no different. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the only difference is it's not as interactive because it's not a board game. So yeah. as you said, Josh, it's I would rather just play the board yeah, game. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, not really. This is kind of like a uh, it's Clue. There's not really. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just that's uh, Clue. God, there just wasn't anything to this. It was exactly the yeah. board game. Just. As I mean, a video good game. for good for sculptured software for developing and Parker Brothers for publishing this game. So I mean, good for them. Could you imagine this as a uh, well? They have made movies out of Clue. They have, and but could you imagine this more or less kind of like an interactive mystery to to solve as a single character where you're going uh, room to room like Snatcher? Um, well, I mean, you could, but then I'd feel like it would be too long drawn on process, and I would. I mean, I don't think it would work because the whole point of Clue is to figure out, is to kind of like pick points of who has what. So I don't think you'd be able to do it with a single player or like a point and click or like a adventure or not an adventure, but you know what I mean? Like going around if, to different rooms, be like, hey, this guy did this because you don't have any clues to figure out who did it. Yeah. So Yeah, I guess. I guess so. But I, I, I would I would assume that you could. Uh, interact with people and they give you clues. Or... It could, but I mean, at the same time, the best yeah. part about Clue is it's always different. Yeah, yeah. If you made a video game, it would always be the same. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Well, anyways. Uh, our last game um, is... Yeah, this, is a, this was a game. Parasite Eve on the PlayStation. Yep. And it was made by my, made by my boys, Square. Uh, was it? I don't think it was Square Enix yet. I think it was just Square no, Soft. No, no, yeah, you're right. It was Square at the yeah. time. Square, so Square, or Square Soft. Either yeah. way, because Square <laughs> Enix was around to like 2010. Anyways, um, 
or 2000 whatever anyways this game was made in 98 and this game started off a bit strange but I found this out too did you know that these this game okay so there was a book and there was a movie called Parasite Eve and then Square said you know what we're gonna make this as kind of a spiritual sequel to it so this all happens in oh, this, I didn't this know all that. happens in the same universe as the book and the movie for Parasite Eve but this happens in like its own little world of the same world you know Oh. Yep. Oh, snap. Cool. Okay. I'm going to have to look that up cool. now. <laughs> so, yeah, why don't you give us a rundown? This is, this is honestly one of my favorite PlayStation games of all time. Yeah. Mine yeah. goes to... Uh, actually, one of my new favorites is uh, Final Fa- the Final Fantasy games, but that's here nor there. It's just a coincidence that it's by Square. I didn't mean to rhyme, but you know what, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So Parasite Eve, uh, you focus uh, you focus on Ayabrea, who's a uh, uh, police detective, mm-hmm. and she's called to an incident. No, no, no. She's, I'm, she I'm goes sorry. To a play. I'm sorry. She go. She yeah. She she needs some time off because she's a workaholic, yeah. and she goes to a play with her Lo- maybe boyfriend, her, loser, her nobody <laughs> date. Her lo- yeah, her nobody. She goes to an opera, and then the uh, people, an opera singer comes up. It's all in the the crazy '90s uh, graphics you might expect at the time for cutscene. Square though, so like you picture the Final Fantasy VII graphics, like the budget graphics, but just not as good. I would say Final Fantasy VIII, except not as except closer not as that. Na- I would say seven only because it's a little closer to that. Like it's not as rounded. But anyways, that that <sighs> does, that's that's okay. semantics at this point. Yeah, you're you're in you're in this opera envir- uh, opera place, and the singer comes up and starts singing, and everyone starts spontaneously combusting. Wait, they start burning wait, up. Wait, there's more. They the, the singer makes eye contact with Aya, and then her eyes change color to the same color that Aya's got, and then everyone starts burning. But I thought the funniest thing that I ever heard was Aya went to this play, this opera. And she thought to herself, man, I wish I could just spontaneously combust so I don't have to watch this show anymore. So instead of her spontaneously combusting, everyone else did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny theory. That's it was for just sure. really cool. Like that whole scene where, like you said, everyone's spontaneously combusting. And okay. this opera girl, she's still singing. And it was just actually a really cool, like, cinematic where, like, she's still singing, but, like, the curtains and everything is on fire. But she's still singing as if nothing's going on. It was a yeah. really cool scene. No, it's it's really odd. The cinematics in this game are fantastic. Uh, I think they still hold up as cheesy looking as they are yeah. now, but it's totally fine. Um, what what what? How the gameplay ends up going is everything's a fixed screen uh, with uh, pre-rendered graphics on the back, so kind of a Resident Evil yeah. type environment or Final Fantasy seven or eight, yeah. even. And you you have a gun and magic, and the meter goes uh, up and down accordingly very much in square fashion mm-hmm. or or uh, turn-based strategy but it's time-based they, what they did was they made it so when you run around the map also this game takes place in Manhattan for those of you that didn't know of course that. Uh, yeah, northeast coast you see a pattern yeah, here yeah, with right these by games. the ocean um, so as you're running <laughs> over the, as you're running through the overworld I guess you could call it uh, very slowly mind you oh my god that pissed me off how slow she ran. I thought she ran. She ran actually pretty well. I thought she ran a little too slow, especially if, like you miss something. You're like, oh, gotta run all the way back up there. Anyways, so you run into random encounters, uh, which for me kind of ruined the horror and mystery. Seeing as how I can just gun down my problems. <laughs> yeah, America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, it was cool because like in the combat, it's like yeah, you had your uh, your ATB or like your action meter that you you couldn't attack until it was full, but mm-hmm. you can run around and dodge the attacks. Yeah, in that sense, it was very much like Star Ocean yeah. at the time, an RPG where you could free roam around the battle map, yeah, and then attack. That way, you can you can dodge and uh, duck accordingly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's very advantageous um, for what would be at the enemy if you're in the wrong place, or you if you're in the right yeah. place on how an enemy would attack you or or move across a map yeah. so it's it's very important to learn that at, even as you're fighting enemies and in boss mm-hmm. battles I felt like because you could get reamed by a big attack and you're done yeah absolutely so I thought like Square Enix did a really good job with that uh, even though for me personally it took away from the horror and everything because like I said you can kind of gun down your problems 
Um, like I personally am not a fan of bless you, Donna. I am personally <laughs> not, <laughs> wow. not a fan. That was all the way in the bathroom too. That's across, that's across the apartment. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of like when you have like a weapon in horror games. Cause like it kind of takes away from some of the horror. Cause like now I can just fight my problems instead of having to run away from it or try to outwit the monster, so to speak. Um, but mm-hmm. the biggest thing for me was actually the cutscenes, how they were fully rendered and really well done. And that actually did a really good job of seeming grotesque. Like, did you get to the part where that rat turned into like this werewolf dog thing? Oh yeah, that absolutely. Was disgusting. Man, I've beaten this game multiple times. That was times. disgusting, but it was so awesome. I didn't get much of a chance to play too much of this, but I think I'll pick it back up later on. Oh no, it's definitely it's definitely worth finishing. But, like, I want to pick it up because like there's a whole series of Parasite Eve, so like that's what I'm interested in. So the second one's more action based. It's not as good. The mystery isn't as yeah. good because th- this has a lot to do with unlocking Aya herself yeah. and what she's about and why she's the only one. Uh, it has a lot to do with mitochondria, uh-huh. Ooh, that with, uh, of the cell, with which helps. Yeah, with, with the evolution of genes and. Um, what this being is that's causing all this mayhem because people what be it they spontaneously combust or just melt into this primordial goo nice is the whole appeal to it photosynthesis um yeah human photosynthesis you might say (laughs) (laughs) it's 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 really cool the mystery is definitely there to solve it's more of a suspense thriller yeah uh just like snatcher um it's it man it's it's so cool i really really enjoy this game uh the coolest aspect about it for sure is the way you assemble guns so it's it's kind of complicated to explain so what you do is you you um you gather gun parts and gun pieces and you can dismantle or remantle some of these pieces depending on what items you get yeah onto another gun so you could have a shotgun that has one part freeze one part stun huh. and quick reload time damn and how and how that affects enemies can be super effective and whatnot so it's got rpg elements on top of the oh. gun instead of the player and then the other rpg elements on the player would be aya's telekinetic magic abilities mm. that she slowly develops across the game so she gets a lot of heal abilities and whatnot. So it's really it's it's very well done. Um, my only my only gripe would definitely be how they went about explaining the the gun mechanism mechanism system and how you combine and get rid of parts. Because once you use a part, uh, let's say you have a part on let's say you have a silencer on one uh-huh. gun and you want to now put the silencer on a new gun. What that'll do is that'll destroy. The previous gun the silencer was on and the game doesn't explain that very well so you have to really fiddle with how that me- mechanism uh, works and then you're just like oh okay that's yeah. how it works okay I didn't like that no that's that's uh, like how everybody says the durability in Breath of the Wild yeah yeah whatever yeah <laughs> so really good uh the the third game on the psp you can get on the playstation network now is highly recommended i i do rather enjoy that one the second one you can probably skip okay i'll keep that in mind honestly yeah the third one focuses on aya like going into enemies minds and you can fight as that enemy okay that's her that's the big appeal of that one it's pretty cool and it's in to, uh, uh, post 2000 graphics so you can imagine how she looks then Ooh, so she's got triangular titties again uh, no, but she's got torn up jeans on her oh! butt. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to play it. Yeah. Oh, man. So, to reiterate, yeah, hi, I have high marks for Parasite Eve. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend it to anyone who has a PlayStation in general. Yeah. Because you can get it on the store. Yeah, good game. Uh, to re- yeah. Final thoughts, Josh? Uh, no, like, uh, it just, it was a great game. Uh, Final thoughts about the whole cast or the whole thing we showed? Sure. Um, I'd say it was about a 50 50 on this one. We had some hits, we had some misses, that's for damn sure. And, uh, I think that's good though. Yeah. It gets, it gets some varying opinions. Um, honestly, if I never have to play, uh, Phantom Detective again, it would be too soon. Phantasmagoria slash Psychic Detective? See, Psychic Detective, <laughs> or Phantasmagoria, I'm sure would have been fine, but like, uh, it just took too long. It was a drag. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, no, I thought it was uh, final thoughts. Honestly, I'm there very... was a few that we could have added on there. Like, we could have added Mist, I think, but no PC games. Say again? Mist. Like... A, a lot of yeah, missed 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 uh missed. I wanted to keep off for kind of a special mm-hmm. point and click adventure yeah. cast. So keep that in mind if need be. So yeah, final cut thoughts. Yeah, I think fifty fifty cast hits misses best one. Um, uh, best one. Well, I mean, I already played Eternal Darkness, so I can't count that one because, I mean, I've already played it. So I, my favorite would have had to be Snatcher. Only because I love everything that has to do with the Metal Gear universe. And it was actually just a really interesting game. Like, I'm probably actually probably going to go play it as soon as I'm done here, honestly. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Uh, what was your least favorite? Oh, Psychic Detective. Yeah, that's kind of the uh, the go-to. Was, <laughs> the only reason that it sucked so bad was it it was more of a movie. And I'm not, I, I don't like watching movies, man. Like, I want to play the game. And, like... I don't know. It, it was no. It was I understand unique, that it was a unique way of coming at the game to like control the perspectives of the different cl- people. But yeah, I just I could I could get into it. Just one yeah. out of, one out no, of ten. Um, yeah. So my least favorite would have to be uh, honestly Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. <laughs> as big as a Scooby Doo fan I am, but Psych- Psychic Detective is right there. Yeah. There's no doubt. No, for sure. Uh, I, lo- I like platforming games, but if it's just to collect them up with, with no interaction and you're just wandering, uh, the 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 appeal of the gameplay wasn't there. Psychic Detective at least had... I, I mean, I played it four times, so I had to have something going for it uh, to put it over. But no, it's still, a, it's still a pretty bad game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, think. My, my favorite, I don't want to choose Parasite Eve just on the fact that I have played it multiple times. Uh, I have a lot of history with it. Uh, Same thing with Snatcher, even though that's only been the last few years. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Eternal Darkness. Because it is great. I just, like, I... Because it is a really good game. It does break the fourth wall. I see a lot of potential for sequels. It does a lot of things of its time that were very innovative. I, I... I like the action in it. I liked how I'm t- the character when they introduce a new character, they start out in their language and phase out phase out into English. Yeah. Which I thought was a cool little little tidbit. For those of you And the fact that it took place in Rhode Island and now I'm yeah, in Rhode for Island. For those of you that want a better review than what we gave, um, I highly suggest checking out actually my cousin on Dirtbag Gaming. He did a review on it. So that's where I got a little piece of information too, because I, I don't own the game but I've played it so a lot of the stuff comes from memory but a lot of refresher actually come from him so if you haven't if you want a better review check out Dirtbag Gaming's video on it it's pretty insightful so there you go so in conclusion the six the uh, the seven games we covered yeah. because were mine weren't good enough Phantasmagoria on the PC Snatcher on the Sega yep. CD Psychic Detective mm-hmm. on the 3DO Eternal Darkness on yep. the GameCube Scooby Doo Night of a Front Hundred Frights on everything in the mid in the early two thousands, yeah. <laughs> Clue on the Genesis and Parasite Eve on the PlayStation. So a lot of exclusive titles. Yeah, like uh, this it time seemed around. to be. It seemed like a lot of mystery games did were exclusives uh, because mystery games just haven't really been much of a. I mean, from a perspective, it didn't seem like mystery games are much of a, a huge field that a lot of gamers enjoy because that doesn't have like the draw like action games or shooter games or things like no, that so you're absolutely I feel right. like a lot of games that were exclusives were by smaller companies because not a lot of people were interested in them so yeah well this was a fun cast yes, it was uh, who has uh, Josh you have the next pick I thought the next pick was with the guest uh, well we had our guest oh I thought we had another one okay so since we're not doing that one the next <laughs> the next topic we're gonna do is games with bad sex scenes in them <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't I can't wait I for can't that wait either that ought to be good oh yeah that could have we could have put phantasmagoria in that <laughs> yeah, that's one that's <laughs> why I thought about that because that's that's actually really yeah there's a bad sex scene to open up the game uh, so that'll be a really fun topic I'm marking it down right now games with bad sex scenes i hope you guys enjoy and no we're not including witcher because witcher was just released recently though it'll probably be an honorable mention it'll be definitely be an honorable mention so this will this will be a fun cast um 
I can't wait. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Enjoyed my mom. Enjoyed Kevin with his sassy thinking as well. I'm sure quite a bit of people... You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to say that about your mother. She's a nice, respectable lady. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's it's some originality, and now I gotta leave to go watch some hockey. Oh, God. Well, anyway, have a good Remembrance Day, my man, or I guess in your case now it's Veterans Day. Now it is vet- Veterans Day instead of Remembrance Day. Yeah, man. Take care, and thanks everybody for listening.